Padres passing a few months ago. I know Larry Lucchino is no longer a part of the Padres organization, but I think in the minds of us, he'll always be a part of what we've uh, what we've done, what we built here in San Diego. So it is a bit of a sad day as well. I imagine there'll be some sort of uh, you know moment of silence uh, prior to the game tonight and. Uh, you know, I know knowing the Padres the way I do, and I would expect you know there'd be some sort of honoring of Larry Lucchino as we move along here. He's he's a pretty important figure in the history of this team. He's an extremely important figure in the history of this organization. You're right, Petco Park wouldn't be here without uh, Larry Lucchino. Um, we just went into the Padre Hall of Fame two years ago. We had uh, the ceremony here, here, um, and you know it's just. Uh, Getting a chance to see him again the last the couple of years ago was the first time I had seen him since, you know, the ownership had changed or when he had moved on. And so, yeah, uh, it, it is a sad day for it should be a sad day for all of us. But certainly feeling it here at Petco Park today as uh, the passing of Larry Lucchino, uh kind of broke this morning. Um, yeah, it's a it's, it's certainly it's certainly yeah. something we all should be thinking about a little bit. And I'm, I, I don't know that the Padres have have some planned at this point but i'm sure there'll be an announcement at some point yeah i i would uh I, I would be sure of that and you know i i hadn't even heard he had been sick and uh you know find out he'd been battling cancer and you know just really sad i mean this is a guy you know whose vision was was great for this city and and he took he took people along with him for the ride that didn't even really know they were taking the ride. Yeah, no, no doubt. You know what I mean? He came... I, I think he he, color, he colored it for us. I don't think we even as San Diegans who, you know, it was hard for us to to see beyond what we had only seen here. He yeah, kinda, that's he right. Kinda, he kind of helped expand our mind a little bit to maybe see a, a venue that we're in today that I don't think anybody could have thought of at the time. Yeah. No, he's he's easy. You know, I, I, I often complain that that San Diego is is full of a bunch of minor league leadership. And, you know, that's why we have minor league teams and done a lot of minor league stuff here. And, and you know, I think we I think Larry Lucchino envisioned a major league city and a, and a major league, you know, ballpark. Uh, the best ballpark you could have uh, across the country and, you know, major league organization. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I honestly wish there was more movers and shakers built in the mold of Larry Lucchino that came yeah. through San Diego. Cause we were lucky to have him come through. And, you know, I, I even tweeted out today, Tony, uh, that, you know, I got to take a second and appreciate this guy for you and I coming on and talking sports on the radio every day. Uh, if we didn't have the Padres, what sports would we have to talk about in San Diego? You know, and with all due yeah. respect to the Aztecs, et cetera, uh, you got to have an anchor tenant here. And, uh, you know, you, it's not hard to envision the Padres not being here. We're not for Larry Lucchino because I, who knows where it all could have gone if they never got a new ballpark, et cetera. So without a doubt, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a giant figure. I think uh, Jay Posner, who, you know, was the sports editor of the San Diego Union Tribune for many years, you know, his note today was that if you look at the three most important people in the history of the San Diego Padres organization, uh, you'd have to put uh, Larry Lucchino right there with Ray Kroc and John Moores. And yeah, there's not a whole lot of other people on that mountaintop. It's completely fair. Yeah. Um, and, Tony and Gwynn, too. Sorry, not to leave your, your dad off. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we had to have somebody to watch, but yeah, no, no, com completely fair. Yeah. Uh, and accurate, I think. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably discuss this at more at different points during the course of this show, uh, the passing of Larry Lucchino, but uh, kind of changing gears. We go back to last night's ball game. The, the yes, Padres sir. Uh, go down. It was 6 2. Uh, Five hits. They only have wrote a couple notes down after the game um, that I that I kind of starred. Uh, first one was only one at bat with runners in scoring position. Right. You kind of talked about it yesterday, Chris, uh, hoping that you know if you continue to keep having opportunity, you're likely to start knocking knocking the door down a little bit. Well, they didn't have very many opportunities. In fact, they only had the one opportunity with runners in scoring position. That was a part of the issue. 
Uh, the top three guys in the line at one through three go one for 11 with an RBI run scored. And the bottom three go one for nine with an RBI and a run scored. Those ended up being the only runs and yeah. two of the five hits. Uh, the middle of the lineup was productive, but there was usually no one on uh, at those times. Um, and so, you know, that's that's how you end up with a 6-2 loss. Pitching hasn't been great yet. It hasn't been um, as good, I think, as we may have anticipated it being, uh, particularly in the, the rotation. Uh, today, it's, it hopefully changes with you, Darvish, uh, going for the pods today. But uh, just a kind of an early kind of feel-out process, it seems like, for, for the pods. Well, if you look at the what they've lost three out of the last four games, and you know it's time to panic. And Scraby's, you know, I'm I'm trying to re- I mean, reel him in a little bit over here. He's, I'm really trying, guys. Yeah, well, just you're the best way for you to try is to just not talk too much about it. Because, <laughs> but how can I not feel like we're slipping into <laughs> last goes. year? There he goes. There he goes. I, I just don't know how you guys can 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 blame Slipping me for, for feeling a little bit of dread about last year I, you can't feel dread seven games in man you just <sighs> can't all right well i have a question for you guys in the big five about gelling as a team which i didn't want to talk well, about we'll look we, are to that. we are to, we are we we'll are can't wait to, to hear the gelling question in the big five <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be it's so about to, much fun yeah we're 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 a week into the season so we're due for the gelling question i the the, the thing that that i see in the last in the three games that they've lost, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, but in two of the three games, they gave up a three spot in the top of the first inning, right? Giants got up three, nothing right away on, uh, I think it was Friday, went on to an eight, three win. Giants got up two, nothing in the second inning on Saturday, and then went on to win that game. And then uh, the Cardinals put three up there last night. And, you know, you, you, I hate to say the top of the first inning means everything. It doesn't, obviously. But, you know, you want your starter to go out there and set, set a quick tone for the ball game. And, you know, you give up the RBI double to, to uh, Arenado, and I think that that, you know, I, I don't know. A young pitcher sometimes, you, you're thinking too much about that. You leave a pitch up to Contreras, and now you're down by three. And it's interesting. When these hitters are relaxed and they're not chasing three or four runs – they are producing and they are getting on base and they are creating a lot of scoring opportunities. But the other game that they gave up three in the first to the Giants on Friday, in that game they went 0 for 1 with runners in scoring position. So to me, there's kind of a there's a bit of a, a trend there. Yeah. If you're down early 3 4 nothing, I don't know the guys are pressing. I don't want to say that, but it's just interesting. The offense doesn't seem to flow as well. You know, you've got to give yourself a chance to bat around the, the lineup once or twice and be in the ball game. So I think that's hurt them. Yeah, well, no, they're very well is probably some of that. And, um, you know, in the perfect world, you're never going to have to, you're, you're going to get that zero up there first, first inning and you're going to be able to come in there and sure. be relaxed. Uh, but I don't know that that should change it anything. Right? Right? I mean, you got a good foundation of what you're trying to do. Nothing changes. With the one thing that that you talk about, especially when you go down early, which is different than giving surrendering three late in the game, where you know you have time, don't have as much time. Right? This is first inning. You give up a few. You got plenty of time to chip away. Just. Keep playing the game the way you do when it's yeah. zero, zero zero. Don't change anything. You know, especially this early, there's no reason. And that this could be where, you know, last year is creeping in, right? Because there's probably a bad taste in a lot of those guys' mouth. And remembering how, you know, maybe the urgency came a little too late and not wanting that to, to be the case this year. But we've seen it when they do it right and there is – uh, and there's the game plan is followed, and they they attack it. They they put up runs. They put up a lot of runs. And, and you're right that the two get the seems like the three games, the three three of the four losses, they've given up early runs, and just haven't been able to kind of chip away at it. And uh, yesterday was kind of a, a, a one of those nights for them. So hopefully things will reset here today. Darvish uh, going up. On the mound against Miles Michaelis, uh, the Cardinals starting pitcher. You, as we discussed uh, yesterday, probably been the best looking 
of the starters so far this season. We've now run through all five. I thought Dylan looked pretty good, but even him at times didn't seem like he was happy with what he was doing. You know, Joe's gotten off to a slow start a little bit. Michael King, although it didn't seem like he could be hit, he also couldn't command the baseball. I think he walked seven in his start. So um, I think you has been the one. He's been the ace so far. They're going to need him to be the ace here today as they uh, try to get a victory. Yeah, get some zeros up on the board early, let this offense settle in. But you're right, Tony. You can't, in a perfect world, you can't give up zero in the first every game. So right. you're going to have to show the ability to chip away at 3 nothing leads, et cetera. But uh, I just thought that was kind of something that I've, I've noticed here in the early yeah, no. losses this season that's been getting getting down right, uh, right off the bat. Uh, but we should also, you know, there was a couple of nice things that happened last night. Scraby, Mr. Negative. No, I'm not negative. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, Jackson Merrill got his first career home run. There you go. Right. Nothing, Apple, wrong, with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Fernando hit number three. Uh, Do you, you think look. Jackson Merrill blacked out as he walked, ran around the bases because he did the finger in the air thing? He did a lot of stuff with his hands, which is he amazing. Was, Why he not? Was, Why he not? Was showing, I mean, first of all, I don't know if this is true, but I know if I was 20 years old, and I hadn't got a big league homer and for I don't know how many years now I've been seeing dudes go big fly and get to second base and throw up something towards the bullpen. Yep. I would want to do it even if we didn't even have True. something like that no, on our no, team. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I did might... it in my softball game last week. <laughs> and there is no bullpen. Well, that's just sad. Right. That's just right. sad. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, like, everybody's it, doing it. So everybody, you know, not? everybody's dreaming of doing that at some point. He got his chance to do it. Sure. He looked good doing it. And then he really blacked out when he came. I don't know who he was talking to in the stands. It probably was some of his fam up there. Uh, and then he got a half of a silent treatment. They didn't really do it right. The coaches kind of messed it up because they gave him high fives. And yes, then the but players, nobody else did. Then yeah. the players got to give him a silent treatment at first. But uh, good for I mean, that's that's J Jackson has looked um, like he belongs. And that was just another um, a, another chance for him to to look good. I think. Uh, the young guys have done their thing. You know, it, it, the young guys, Jackson, when his opportunities, I, I know Tyler Wade's not necessarily a young guy, but a guy with uh, not a ton of experience doing his thing. Camposano doing his thing. So there's bright spots in it. They just haven't, you know, they're still trying to put this thing together. Still, at, I thought Chris made a really good point yesterday that, you know, especially as it pertains to the bullpen, Mike Schultz still trying to figure out who belongs where. You got. Suarez in the ninth, and then you're trying to piece it together all the way up until that point. And so, you know, Brito has had his struggles. Um, uh, Kolick has is, is probably been the, the next best reliever outside of uh, Suarez and a little bit of opportunity. Or him and Matsui have been the best relievers so far outside of Suarez. And so you're trying to piece all that together still here seven games in. Yeah. And it's going to take time. Give him, give I him don't a, have time. Scraby, give it. You know what? Not only you know, do, we not, just need to ban Scraby from talking baseball yeah, for not like only the first do I wanna, three weeks. I want to hear you. I, not only do I not want to hear you whining after seven games, I don't want to hear you whining after 70 games. So you got a long, that's right. You got a long way to just relax and watch some baseball hey, unfold all right, before so, you decide so on I this see, season. I just got a note here from Dave Marcus. Ooh, he, a note from Dave he, Marcus. He, he just kind of gave me. The a kind of rundown on, on who Jackson was pointing at. Apparently, Jackson was pointing at none other than Wyatt Hoffman, who ah. was in his dad's seats. Uh, so that's he's pointing to his boy. Like, yeah, right. I, I went big fly on the so big stage. So then he was definitely alert and knew yeah, exactly he, what he, he was doing. He didn't black out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, I, Dave Marcus. I just said black out just because that's what I would have done. I probably would have missed second base on the way around or tripped on it or something. But, yes, you would have. Uh, Tyler on the chat said last night, as soon as he hit that ball, he leapt up from the couch and screamed, Oppo Taco! My wife did not know how to react. Well, that I was don't know if anybody knows how to react if you don't know what an Oppo Taco is. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. A month from now, even two weeks from now, the only thing you'll remember about last night's game is his first career home run. So, right. That's going to, that'll hold up. So good for Jackson Merrill to get on the board and, you know, get back to 500 tonight, get rolling again. Get Scraby out of the dog, out of the doldrums. Out of the dog doldrums. Yes, that's where you are residing. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> All it, right, it's, it's poncho night. 
They cannot lose on 97.3 The Fan Poncho Night. Tonight. It is. Yeah. It is 19. It is 19. It is 97.3 Poncho Night tonight. Uh, that should be fun. That should, that should be, be fun. There's... It's a good poncho, man. Yeah. Get on out here. Those listening, get on out here. Get you one of them ponchos. First 40,000. First 40. Yeah. Thank First 40,000. Just want to make so sure don't people show know. up late. You won't get a poncho. So <laughs> let's get to break. When we come back, you know, we're trying to talk Scraby off the ledge. ESPN is only fueling his fire. Mm -hmm. I'll explain on the other end more Gwen and Chris on the way. Stay up to date with everything.
All right, welcome back to the program. We are underway for a Tuesday. 222 is the time, Chris Hello. Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace studios where the YouTube cameras are being uh, a little Caddy fickle Wampus. today. Yeah, Caddy Wampus, fickle. <laughs> I don't know. Annoying. Annoying. Can't, can't seem to get them set up. But uh, once we do get it all organized, you can watch the uh, program on YouTube. Just search 97.3 The Fan and enjoy the program like the uh, guys do at one of my favorite Italian restaurants. And I'm um, giving a free shout out because they're just the nicest guys ever uh, at Buena Fiquecha down in South Park. It's an Italian place. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, been there. Yep. But uh, it's really fantastic. And I went to dinner there last night. And uh, Cosimo, the waiter, he wasn't our waiter. He was serving other tables. But he kept kind of cruising by our table and kind of glancing in my direction. Finally, he just he came really over were. and said, you're Crisello, aren't you? <laughs> but he wasn't sure. And I said, I am. And he was the happiest Wait, you, guy did, you've ever seen in your you life. Did you say I am? Like It sounded like you said I am like you were unsure. you like, I am? Oh, I no. Am? Yeah, no, I said I was. because oh, okay. All right. I could tell he was just so excited that he might be meeting me. And <laughs> so I was just, I, I tell you what, Tony, it made me feel good. Just because sure. he... Not only he listens to the show every single day, but so does the chef. And all the guys in the kitchen came out, and we took photos. Wow. And everybody I was at dinner with last night was like, well, this is great. And it is great that we're able to kind of entertain and, and allow people to enjoy part it, of their afternoons. That, it it is, makes me feel good to hear that, even though I know that's what we we aim to do every day. So. I, I think um, it's still I know I've said this before. It's still like mind blowing that people turn their radio to listen to us. Yeah. Three, three guys. Uh, I can't think of an appropriate word right now, but, <laughs> you know, we mix it up. You know what I'm saying? It's it's uh, it's, yeah. it's still it's very humbling. It is. And uh, but it also makes me feel good. Excuse me. Oh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> Uh oh, are you choking up? <laughs> oh, no. I know what it is. I actually know what it is. Cracker. I'm getting to the end of these crackers. I know I've been dealing with, the with them for like four Wait, years. I want here's the thing though. This is I've been I've been meaning to ask you this, Chris. Yes. Because it's not as though you're chewing while you're because you were just talking perfectly, but yeah. then randomly without chewing. I know it's like a leftover morsel of the cracker gets <laughs> caught in my throat. That's all that happens. I uh, wish good. you would. You not guys will be. You guys will be those. my. You guys will be my age one day. So and, just, and, and yeah. so I'm not going to eat those crackers. Don't eat those seem crackers. To try to kill you every <laughs> day. <laughs> but I am over them. I know you are. I, I like. I'm not even joking. This is not a joke. I hate these crackers. <laughs> I hate everything about them. I'm so happy I'm getting this off my chest right now. Yeah, me too. Uh, but I want to—I <laughs> don't want to interrupt my thank, uh -oh. thanking uh, Cosimo and the guys at uh, Buena for Ketchup for listening to the show. <laughs> the boss says Chris always has Werther's hard candy on deck. <laughs> what does it? that mean? Werther's Originals? <laughs> uh, no, I don't it's know. old people candy. Oh, isn't it? It's where everybody's grandma and grandpa has at their house. Don't know anything what, about where, that. Where are they called? Werther's Originals. Uh, no, those little, those up. little like caramel things you know what i'm talking about no nope. I'm, I'm about to look them up. oh you know what a werther's original is i do not you don't. i don't have old werther's. people's candy at my house you know, oh, old oh, oh yeah i see these joints i'm i'm googling a picture for chris real quick you won't see them on. at my house i don't have any well it's just straight up caramel isn't it yeah yeah mm -hmm. but but let's like here you go chris here's the picture of it you've you've definitely seen this you've definitely okay seen it. it's awesome uh chris's fantabulous <laughs> sports game show is coming up uh in about 15 minutes a little later in the show we'll visit with Derek gould of the st louis post dispatch talking about mike schilt wrote a big article about the former manager of the cardinals who of course now is manager of the padres tony you are going to uh Give us some uh, some uh, negative vibes about this Padre ball club. Well, uh, ESPN. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, they like to do their seven-game power ranking. So uh -oh. They also have uh, went ahead and put con World Series contenders together uh -huh. already here on, uh, what is this, April 2nd? Yep. We're not and, one of them. Uh, well, we're, we're in the third tier. Uh, we have, according to this, a win average of 82.5. Okay. So they got us 
half a game better than uh, we were last year. Okay. Um, 38.4%. That is our chances of making the playoffs. 34.8. 38.4. Oh, 38.4. That's much better. Yeah, a little bit better. A little bit better. And then they have a 1% chance of winning the World Series. So hmm. um, I'll give you some of the – I'll give you the little blurb they, they wrote about the Padres. It says, during the Cots era back to 2000, the San Diego opening day payrolls have been all over the place. In the middle, bottom, dead last 2010. That was the year I was on the team. And there was a three-year run at the to- in the top ten, culminating in the last year's number three ranking. For all the financial aggression, the Padres got – an 82 and 80 record third place finish and a winter vacation that begin uh, after game 162. This payroll is back in the middle of the pack and the scale back means that a roster still dominated by a handful of stars has seen plenty of flux Hmm. Uh, pivotal issues. The San Diego lineup is top heavy, a problem most noticeably in the outfield slots next to Fernando Tatis Jr., top prospect Jackson Merrill, the Padres' opening day center fielder, proves to be ready. That fills one hole, but that's putting a lot on a player who has yet to play a single game in AAA. And then there's left field, where Jerickson Profar was brought back after flirt after flirtation with free agency. The Padres need unexpected production from unexpected places, or else a lineup that features Tatis, Machado, Bogarts is still going to be below average. Oh boy! Well. That's fueling Scraby's fire. Well, did yes, he, it did is. Mr. Did the author know that Jackson Merrill hit a home run last night? So uh, uh, clearly, he this this pinned before he yeah. hit his home run last. Because we, yeah. we even got the he hasn't played a game in AAA yet, but he's played seven major league games. So, but uh, you're still the, telling me there's a chance, guys. Well, the different categories are number one tier is their time is now to win a World Series. That's the Dodgers and others. The next tier is their time could be now. And then we're in tier three, which is we're saying they have a chance. Yes. So there you have it. At least we're there. There's a chance. Yeah. Some of the other teams in our category are the uh, Cubs and the Guardians and the Cardinals. So hmm. we'll see how it goes. I have a real There's quick uh, thing from YouTube that I wanted to read because it's, it's nice. It's from Chris W. You guys seriously have no idea how thankful many of us spend, uh, how many of us who spend the day in our cars that you three are on our radio airwaves. Thank you all for what you do. Much love. Thank, Thank you. Chris appreciate w. you. Yeah, Thank you. That. Appreciate Very nice. That. Very nice. You should go work at Buena Fiquecha. You could <laughs> fill in with, fit in with all the gang over there. I do. I do love it when uh, I hear stuff like that because obviously, well, it's just nice. It's nice to hear it, but it's even nicer to know that people are out there enjoying the show. Yes. So I that that made me feel great last night. So thank I you. I can't lie. I hear it often here at the stadium. In term, is it? It's not my internet today. Is it? Is it scraby? Because the the fan thing keeps popping in on and off. Is the that fan? I mean, our our uh, our our YouTube. Oh, uh, I don't know. I think it is yours because we're moving over here. So okay, yeah. So I'm sorry. It's okay. The, the we're trying. Stadium internet is not great today or yesterday for that matter. <laughs> um, I actually I I hear that a lot at the stadium about our show. Um, so I'm, I'm happy you guys get to kind of hear from some of the people as well. I, I'm always walking around the stadium because I'm usually stuffing my face. So I'm watch, walking to get some food, and I run into people all the time. Um and yeah, man, it's uh it's it's humbling, like I said, to hear that people listen to us go do our banter back and forth. Yes, yeah, and yeah. Thank especially, you to everyone especially who especially when I'm you know coughing crackers into the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, for... Make sure everybody t- when you see Chris, tell him you don't like his crackers and he should give them up. He's not going to, so you can tell me if you want to. Champ <laughs> says especially matter. when you eat your string cheese. Yeah, string cheese doesn't get caught in my throat at least. Uh, I'll tell you I've what, been I've been for saying this for a long time. time. Uh, Chris uh, makes Chris egg cheese look, look delicious. delicious. Like, like, I, well, I, well, I, well, I oftentimes well, well, want to ask him ask for cheese, but he only, he only has one drink cheese, cheese most of the time, so I just let him be. Look, Tony, I have two. <laughs> oh, you have two today. And I'm coming to the ballpark tonight, and if you, uh, <laughs> if, you if you mind your P's and Q's, I might even bring you one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? That would be the best day of your life, getting the Chris Ello lunch special. Strange. Hey, string cheese, string and, cheese and, and crackers. Crackers. 
Well, look, we can't have Spiros delivered every day, Scrape. So you'll just have to tough it out. Take a break. When we come back, <laughs> you are under the gun, Scraby. Because mm. it's about time you win one of these Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game yeah, Show. Yeah, buddy. See how you do on today's category. And everybody else can play along out there. So stick around on Gwen and Chris. Come get your show. The right. biggest guests in San Diego sports talk appear on. Cristello, for my friends at Spiro's Mediterranean Cuisine in Coronado and La Jolla. And now at the ballpark. That's right. You can enjoy great Mediterranean cuisine right there at Petco Park if you're on your way down to...
239 on the clock. Tony Gwynn Jr., Chris Ello, Matt Scraby. A Chris's fantabulous sports game show on the way. Really looking forward to this, Scrape. How about you? <laughs> you, 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 you dastardly, dastardly person. I don't know uh, what I'm trying to say. I, I think that sounds like you're not looking forward to no, it. No, this is like game. my least favorite game that we do. Why? Because Man, it, this is fun. It embarrasses me every single time. There's no way that you should be embarrassed on this one. Do you play oh. fantasy baseball? I do. Do you consider yourself a champion at fantasy baseball? Well, we all know I'm the double champ, so. All right. Well, then you should be able to back up wow. your status Ooh. as a double champ Ooh. by having success okay. in today's category. Wow. You have no excuses, but I still think you'll probably end up losing. Okay. This, see, this is this is interesting, it's great, because it's a catch-22, right? You, wanna, you really want a subject that you can – like win it but now you have one if you lose that's right i don't want to hear you whining about i didn't the, ask for this topic. game to happen it's gonna well, hurt even more Scrape. it's happening buddy don't you worry all right we ready all right. we're ready to it hey all you beautiful people out there it's time to play one of our favorite games of the week all right we, we like, like to call, call it, it. oh Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show. And it starts right now on 97.3 The Fan. All right, hi, everybody, and welcome into the program. Uh, Chris Ello here, your host for uh, Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show. I'm going to give the guys uh, today's category in just a moment. They're going to be naming, uh, begin naming correct answers. They will rotate naming those correct answers if they get one wrong. Or they duplicate an answer, which I don't believe has ever happened. I don't know it's happened either. But we have to have the rule just in case. No, uh, I think it did happen once. You will get a strike. Three strikes and you're out. I think that was me. Yeah, I think it was Oh, too. did you duplicate one? I think I it was did. this year, maybe. Uh, ah, I don't think that's so. That's going too far. I yeah, doubt it was this year. I think it was it. last time we played, actually. Scraby, I believe, won in January. He won once in February. He had a winless March. Yeah. And now we're into April. So we'll see how he Less does. Less games played in March, though, so... Um, there are 18 correct answers today, guys. So you're going to need 10 correct answers to win. Let's get right into it. Uh, Scraby, you are, as I said, are a, a fantasy baseball champion. You should have no problem at all in this category. Zero. But you will. Okay, thanks. Today's category, guys who drove in 100 runs last season. Guys who had 100 or more RBIs last season. There were 18 of them in Major League Baseball. Ooh. This is uh, the category is otherwise known as the leaders in ribeyes. Steaks. Steaks. Steaks, baby. Steaks. Steaks, baby. So, uh, Scrape, you want to go first? You, I mean, look, you play fantasy, RBIs is a category. I got to believe you know something about this. I do, and I will something. just take my – the guy who won me the league last year, basically, Ronald Acuna Jr. You're going first then, and you're oh, selecting Ronald Acuna. I thought Acuna. you were asking well, I was me, asking yes, uh, yes. if you want to go first, but <laughs> yes, I guess I'll you're go going first. first. <laughs> I just said it, so. Ronald Acuna Jr. had 106 <laughs> RBIs. That is a correct answer. That is how Boom. the game works. We are underway, and now it is Tony Gwynn Jr.'s turn to answer. A player with uh, 100 or more RBIs last season. How about uh, Peter Alonso? Ah, Pete Alonso. He was second in the majors wow. in that category last year with 118. That is correct. Impressive. We are tied one to one, and uh, there are 16 correct answers left. Scraby, so it's a wide open board. Who are you guessing now? Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts. Mookie. You would think he had over 100 RBIs. I hate when you do this. I know, but you're right. Okay, good. He had 107 RBIs last year. Mookie finished sixth in the major leagues in that category with 107. So uh, Scraby takes a 2-1 lead, and it is up to Tony Gwynn Jr. Uh, how about a, a Mr. Matt Olson? Oh, he's literally taking the ones I'm about to do. Well, Matt Olson... Uh, Won the RBI championship by yeah, like a 138? wide margin. Yeah, 139? yeah, one thirty nine. Okay, Pete Alonso was second with one eighteen. So Olson won it by twenty one RBIs. Blew the doors off of it. By the way, I think that's a record that may hold up forever. 
Yeah. Although for sure. forever's a long time. But it's the, already been forever. The yeah, it has. Hack Wilson, old Chicago Cub, has a record 191. I don't know that anybody's ever going to get there, even in this Manny, day. Manny of threatened it one year yeah. at the break. Got ended up within the 160s, I think. Yeah. But 191, wow. man, that's that's it's a crazy. Lot. That's a lot of steak. And if you ever watched, <laughs> if you ever looked at Hack Wilson, he definitely ate a lot of steak. <laughs> All right, two two, uh, Scraby, you're up. Man, yeah, I'm, over a hundred RBIs, heat. or a hundred or more. There's guys with exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm just hoping because he's so good, and the Dodgers scored a lot of runs last year. Freddie Freeman. You're already hoping. Yeah, on your third <laughs> guess, this man is see, hoping already. See, I, it's not I, a good I, sign. I know who had a lot of hits and stuff, but I'm not sure about the over 100. Well, you should pay attention because RBIs is a category know, in fantasy baseball, and you are a champion. Yes. You're also correct. Freddie Freeman had 102 Ooh, RBIs wow, just squeaked one, over yeah. the uh, threshold. So that is correct. Scraby takes a 3-2 lead. Tony Gwynn Jr.'s turn. How about the other Dodger last year? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uh, J. A. D. A Martinez. A J. Oh, a D. A Martinez. Yeah. He got over 100, 103 RBIs for uh, J. D. Martinez. <laughs> I, you know, every time I see J.D. Martinez's name, Scraby, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think of our old friend, Odd Thomas. Oh, yeah. Because he had a I very know. interesting nickname for J.D. Martinez that I refuse <laughs> to uh, repeat on this show. Well, the J stood for Jumbo. That's all I got to say about that. All right. Let's. <laughs> Tony remembers now. Tony oh, we know what it is. Now. I'm just, <laughs> just trying to avoid that. Uh, I can't believe that's wowzers. his nickname, yeah. honestly. It is, though. It three is. three, <sighs> you're up, Scrabe. Wow. Like, um, I'm just gonna go with another guy who hit a ton of home runs and hope that there are people on base. Marcel Ozuna. Marcel, Marcel Ozuna. Ozuna. Interesting. Interesting guess. Marcel hit. I'm looking for him here. Forty two, maybe. He hit forty. Forty. I think with a forty home runs, he'd have I to mean, have a hundred RBI. I'm hoping he had exactly a hundred RBI. Oh, thank goodness. So you're good. Oh, that is correct. Gosh. Marcel Ozuna. Correct. Scraby's struggling, though, I can tell. No, 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 no. My no. guy is struggling. Scraby oh, by the, way, four by the three. way, your boy Thomas is listening. He just yes, texted he all just, of them. Yes, told, we, know the, we know the nickname of oh, yeah. Thomas. Oh, I forgot we just Thomas, don't want to say it. You can't say it. <laughs> Odd can't Thomas. Say it. Thank you, Thomas. Odd Thomas is out there. Man, that's the first time that group text has been used in a while. I know. <laughs> it popped up blank for me until that nope. text. Yeah. <laughs> uh, four to three. There are 11 correct answers remaining. 100 or more RBIs last year, Tony. Looking mm. to tie it up at four here. I, I, I think I, I think there's another Dodger in there. You I think, think wow. Mr. Max Muncy oh. was also a 100 RBI guy. That gives them four 100 RBI guys last year. Which is ridiculous. That man. is ridiculous, and it is also correct. He had 105. Mm. Yeah, they had four guys. Uh, Betts, Muncy, J.D., and JT. Freddie Freeman. 4-4. Four, four. Scraby, 10 uh, correct answers. Uh, we don't have to pick up the pace, but we have to pick up the pace a little right. bit. So um, give me a guess. I'm not trying to stress you out. I'm. Uh, what about Shohei Otani? He Shohei. would have to be there. Shohei Otani. Well, the Angels stink, so did he hit a lot of solo shots? He hit 44 home runs. He had to have 100 RBIs. Please oh, tell me he, he didn't did. play a whole season. I know. That's the other thing. But he did hit. For a lot of the season, he had 44 right? home runs. He had 95 RBIs. <laughs> Just short, scrape. I give you credit, Shohei, and look what you did. He had five more. Strike one. I didn't need that, Chris. <laughs> I didn't need that. All right, Tony Gwynn Jr. You uh, now can take over the lead for the okay, first time. Well, I With saved 10 correct this answers one. left. You save Max one. Muncy oh. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> just decided that would be a good time to play that. Well, we just huh? talked about it, so. All right. I was not expecting that. Tony, you were all. in Korea when You weren't here when, uh, when Max that happened. Muncy oh. sucks. I, I, was, I was commenting oh on God. his fine performance in the field after that oh. second game of the series, and so. I have a stomachache. Scraby, <laughs> Scraby kept that 
for oh, future use. I, I I plan. I hope we hear that more than just today. Well, it will forward. happen more. Um, I save this one for a, a go ahead point, right? Go here. ahead and point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead point because I know how much Mr. Ello loves this guy. Give me none other than Juan See, Soto. I Juan wasn't Soto. sure. Obviously, he, had, he was on the list, but... He was tied for fourth in uh, the major leagues with 109 That's incredible ribeyes. to me, because for a long time, we were complaining about him not getting on base or walking. He just walks too much. He, he walked, walked with the bases much. loaded 132 times. Didn't That's you know that? Good. I mean, it still is a run batted in. Still a run it? batted in. All right, Tony takes the lead by a score oh, of no. five to four. Here's Scraby, there are nine correct me. answers left. You have a strike. It would behoove you to get this one correct. It would behoove me, huh? Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. Name a slugger that had 100 or more RBIs last season. I'm trying to go through my head. Oh. Yeah, well, that's a scary place to be. <laughs> it is a scary place to be. Give me a second, though. Right. You can have as much time as you like. Oh, you're the one that oh, doesn't like he's carryovers. Got one. What about Corey Seager? Corey Seager. Corey. Another also guy that didn't play much of the of season time. last year. <laughs> oh, I picked the wrong one. 33 home runs, 96 RBIs. <laughs> Came up short. <laughs> Not correct. Oh. Mm. Mm -mm. Strike oh, two. No. Strike mm. two. No. Mm. Scraby in trouble. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, Tony Gwynn, in, in the meantime, it's your turn. The fantasy champ is not here. You know, this no, he's not. He's, me he knowing who had the most RBIs is not a fantasy How, champion. What, yes, what kind of yes, category this, should I have picked for you, Scrabe? I gave you a fantasy baseball Name stat the category. players that you had on your fantasy team. <laughs> I would win that. Well, you know what? That wouldn't be much of an advantage for you because you spouted off about them it's so true. often last year that Tony and I know them just as well as you That's do. That's true. Um, Who else was over 100 RBIs last year? Tony Gwynn Jr.? How about Ronald's teammate? Other teammate, mm -hmm. other Ozzy Alvi. See, I have him on my fantasy team, but I have this distinct picture in my head that next to his RBI is like he doesn't 97. even know his own fantasy team. Doesn't Chris? know his own guys. No, so. no, this yeah. guy is on my team this year. Well, I don't blame you for not picking Ozzy Albies because, after all, Brian Kenny and the idiots at MLB Network oh, yeah. oh, that's didn't right. even name him as a top 10 second baseman, which is insane. That's right. Despite the fact he had 109 RBIs last year. Oh. Tied for fourth with Juan mm. Soto. Mm -mm -mm. Ozzy Albies. Uh, Tony's now ahead uh, six to four. Scraby's on the doorstep. Needs to get this answer correct and then pray for a miracle. Can you he give me? It. He's going to get back in it. What do you? What? What hint would you like? <laughs> I mean, it. You know, the game has gotten so away from us. How, to many, give you hints how many ALNL is there? Oh uh, my goodness! Left. One, two, two and one. Uh, two and two. This is really entertaining radio. Okay. Two and two three, and three okay. and three, five American League, three oh, wow. national. Five American League. Okay, so I'm going to go with Marcus Simeon, the guy I actually meant to say. Marcus Simeon had 100. That's correct, Scraby. You stay alive. Stupid Corey Seager again. <laughs> Corey. Corey's like the biggest talking point on this show for some reason. He gets a lot of ink on this show. Uh, Tony's ahead six to five, but it is his turn. No strikes yet, Tony. You have seven correct answers remaining out there. I believe Julio Rodriguez I was Tony is good. Good. also a hundred. Hundred and three guy. Tony is really J -Rod. good. J Rod, he's good. J Rod is correct. Seven to five. Six answers left. Scrabby, you need to get one of them. Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Ooh. Schwarber. All of a sudden, my man started to come it's, alive it's a little bit. Starting to to heat up. You're I like it. A little bit, a little late, bit here. I like it. Yeah. Sure bomb. It would be a bum if he wasn't on the list, but he is. Forty-seven homers, one hundred and four RBIs, with a batting average of one ninety-seven. <laughs> no, he did not. That's right. He did. No, yes, he did. One ninety-seven. Wow. <laughs> I thought that um, was a joke. Six for Scraby, seven for Tony. Five correct answers I just left. Got one. You guys are doing a hell of a good job. Keep it going. Scraby. Yeah. Much respect, man, for not packing it in right now. I love it. Okay, I got one, though. All yeah. right, that's fine. I got another one, too. How about Nick Castellanos? Nick Castellanos. Castellanos. God, Tony is good. That is pretty good. I didn't even think about a him. A buck six for Nick Castellanos of the Philadelphia Phillies. 
Eight to six. Four uh. correct answers left, Scrape. Wander Franco's not on the list. I know that. Uh, oh, so yeah. why are you talking I was about look that? Up. I just that uh, would not have had good. to stall for time. Uh, Jordan Alvarez. Jordan, Jordan Alvarez. Hell of a good guess. He's uh, only got ninety nine. I will tell you that the number three RBI finisher in all of baseball last year was a Houston Astros outfielder. Uh, pro- oh, an outfielder. Oh, but it was I not. I know who it is. It was not Jordan Alvarez. Can though. I just say it? Because Tony won. Uh, Alvarez had good. Alvarez had 97 RBIs, mm. so you have struck out. And now that you've struck out and mm. lost, who should you have said? Kyle Tucker. Yeah, Kyle Tucker. <laughs> Kyle Tucker, Adelise Garcia, Christian Walker, and Rafael Devers are mm. the only four that Christian you guys Walker did not was name. The Diamondback I was looking for. Did we, did we, didn't name a, we didn't name a Dallas Garcia, did we? No, we didn't. No, I said he was one that you yeah. didn't name. Yeah. Okay. Tucker, okay. Garcia, Christian Walker, Rafael Devers. Those are the four that were not named. Give Tony his music. Turn it up. He has won again. Okay, Brandon on the chat. Don't tell me to play the music for Tony. <laughs> yeah, play the music. <laughs> Don't tell me this. Come on. <laughs> Now Another, everybody can actually see the salsa or the dancing. I don't know what to, Tony was doing some GTL like Jersey Shore thing. Going well, he's on. running out of moves. He celebrates yeah, I've been doing so the same often. Tired moves for like three years now. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Tony Gwynn Jr. wins. We have At a daily gambit back. when we come back to more Gwynn and Chris.
All right, welcome to hour number two of Gwen and Chris. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace studios. Tony Gwynn Jr. down at Petco Park, where he and uh, Bob Scanlon tonight will on the uh, radio. We'll call the uh, Padres Cardinals game. Jesse Agman moving over to the TV side for a couple of days. And uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Scanlon and Mr. Gwynn Jr. on the call coming up at 6.40 tonight. Uh, Sam Levitt will have the Padre pregame show at 540. And, of course, all of it originates from Petco Park, which we once again mention uh, uh, the sadness surrounding that venue and the uh, Padre organization today with the passing of uh, Larry Lucchino, former uh, president of the uh, Padres organization. The age of 78. Used to feel like 78 was kind of old. Now I feel like 78, he was robbed of a few years. You know what I mean? More than a few years. Yeah, more than a few. Uh, Larry Lucchino, I didn't, you know, I spoke highly of him earlier, and I'll speak highly of him again because he was the kind of guy that this city, this city I always felt needed more of. And, you know, like I felt if Larry, if Larry Lucchino was the president of the Chargers, we'd have a new football stadium and we'd have an NFL team. I mean, I mean that's just the way I feel about that. I, I, I think he's a guy that would have got it done. You know, he got he it done with it Petco done. Park. And, you know, I, I again, did you ever see the movie? I know you've seen it. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Yes. And the, the basis of the movie, classic, they always show it at Christmas. Mm-hmm. But the, cla- the, the basis of the movie is that the Jimmy Stewart character uh, passes, he dies, and then an angel comes and shows him what would have happened in the world had he not been there because he feels like his life had been a waste. Yeah. And the angel comes and says, look what would have happened if you hadn't been there. You affected all these people. That's the whole basis of that movie. It's and a good message. It is a great message. And I kind of feel that a little with Larry Lacino. I mean, where would we, we wouldn't have a sports talk show because we wouldn't have a baseball team and we wouldn't have a Petco Park to go to and we wouldn't right? I mean, yeah. a oh, lot yeah. of things would have changed. And I, I understand that things had to happen. They had to win the World Series and night or get into the World Series in ninety eight that helped Petco Park, you know, but those pass are all on the ballot. That, but that was something that had to happen and, and did he, happen. And he put it together, put help put those teams together. But he had the vision. And I don't know anybody else in this in this city since I've been living here for the last nine you know, years, you know, has ever had those kind of visions. Most everybody else's vision of, is of smaller. Don't spend any money. Don't do any improvements. Yeah. That's kind of San Diego as far as, you know, I, I get frustrated by that. I mean, Petco Park does definitely make improvements all the time and they're they're living up to their end of the bargain they have a great venue downtown yes they, it's one of the greatest ballparks in all of baseball well, it's and rated it gets, number one that's what i was going to say it gets oh, voted sorry. as such often and Still you know thunder. anyway larry lucchino was was great and you know the, the thing about the national story on larry today is going to mostly be about remember camden yards that was yeah. his baby as well and See, baltimore that that stadium was like hundreds of years old, and because it, it, it looks like it, right? He well, he was the I I, I want to say he's the only guy, but he was at the head of the project that put together Camden Yards, and yeah, gave baseball a facelift by going to the retro look on ballparks, yeah. and that's that that's Camden Yards was the first to do that, and of course Larry Lucchino was also involved in the Red Sox success. So there's a lot of be a lot of stories about all of that. But we in San Diego have a, our own special place in our hearts for Larry Lucchino. So uh, very sorry to hear of his passing today. And uh, as I said, I'm I, I, I mean, tell the Padres what to do. They know how to handle these things. But, you know, I would think a moment of silence and something of that nature would be in, in store at the ballpark tonight and probably some more some more honors for Larry Lucchino in the coming weeks. Yeah, um, make, make sure you get there. Early, because that's usually when that stuff happens. Yes, exactly, Scrape. Uh, 3.05 is the time. We're going to get into our daily gambit. We have not talked much yet about the great basketball games that were played last night. Two of them, really spectacular. Iowa over LSU. It's pretty good. UConn over USC. 
and uh, women's basketball in the starring role last night. Let's get into it now on the Daily Gambit. Do you like money? I think about money a lot. Do you like money without doing anything? Uh, duh, winning. Do you want to make money while watching sports? I think Washington is immortal luck. Washington, woohoo! If you answer yes, this is your segment. Just don't blame us when you lose. Nothing is ever your fault. It's your game. Take it. Gwen and Chris go through the top bets of the day in The Daily Gambit on 97.3 The Fan. Daily Gambit is our daily sports betting segment here on Gwen and Chris. Please, everybody, gamble responsibly. I did not gamble responsibly last night because I put together a parlay, and it's dead before it even gets started, Chris. What was your parlay? I forgot. Padres money line, so there you go. Oh, you lost. Yeah. It was three three, three plus Matt Waldron strikeouts. He definitely had... Three plus. I think he had seven or eight strikeouts. He did. And Jake Cronenworth, I don't believe he got a hit last night. He didn't. Night. So you went one for three in your parlay, yeah. which is like going 0 for three. Yeah. So I'm put right back in my place and I'm just not going to do a parlay. And again you said, today. Yeah, I'm picking this parlay because this is an easy one. It was an easy one. It was until the Padres lost. It wasn't much of an easy one. Now, Iowa and LSU last night, as Chris said, great game. Iowa, they were two-point favorites in this one. Uh, Chris chose LSU. I chose Iowa, and Iowa did win and won by seven, 94-87. Did, you, uh, did Caitlin Clark put on a performance, or did she put on a performance? Well, she uh, put on a performance. 41 points. The thing that was more impressive, I mean, she was hitting threes from the parking lot. And we, she was having to get open to hit those threes from the parking lot. Well, she was lot. stepping back. I, I mean, know. the defense was like, well, you're not going to shoot from there, are oh, you? Oh, you are? Okay. But the thing that was most impressive as far as I was concerned was her 12 assists. Yeah. She sees the floor beautifully and uh, makes great passes, sets up her teammates. And if you consider that those 12 assists led to, I don't know, 24 points at least, because that's two bucket, two yeah. points per bucket. Mm -hmm. She accounted for about 70 of their 94 points. And against a team that's the national champs who are out there trying solely to stop her. Yeah. And they just could not do it. They could not do it. Yeah. Congratulations to Caitlin Clark. And uh, congratulations to women's basketball in general. It was a great night. Followed up by UConn USC. Didn't uh, Angel Reese have 20 rebounds too? She, 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 she had performed a good game. pretty well. And she was limping the entire night. Too. Hurt her ankle early yeah. in the game. She had 17 and 20. It's pretty good. And handled herself in defeat with a lot of class, which yes. I was proud of. Tyler said on the chat, Scraby not allowed to bet on Padres the rest of the season. Oh, yeah. Can't yeah. bet for the Padres? Yeah, because yeah. I always get things wrong. Is that um, the same person who just said that we ought to do a round of uh, – Chris's fantabulous game show with only incorrect answers. So oh, that no, that was Marco. Chance. That was Marco. <laughs> Marco. <laughs> yes, just incorrect <laughs> answers and just pretend like, I, it, like, oh, you got it right. Yeah. They're, they're just piling on. It's okay. I deserve it after that performance. Yeah. In every performance. UConn women, minus three and a half point spread over USC. Chris chose UConn. I chose USC. And I was wrong. UConn won 80 to 73. Paige Becker's. I think a lot of people think she's not as good as Caitlin Clark. I think she's every bit as good as Caitlin Clark. She doesn't have the same shooting range. Not many people do. But she plays the game of basketball beautifully. Uh, 28, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals. Sets up her teammates, does it at both ends. She's a real winner as well. That's going to be a great matchup. Beckers against Clark. Yeah. And, you know, Everybody got excited about the game last night because there was supposed dislike between Clark and Angel Reese, even though they said they like each other. Yeah. It's kind of weird how this works. There's no history between Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers. They're both, you know, well loved, well supported. People seem to all like them. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to the matchup just because they're two terrific basketball players and they both play their guts out mm -hmm. they want to win i one more thing on uconn they put gino ariema's record up there last night career coaching record scrape he's got 1213 wins so he's got 1200 plus wins how many losses do you think he has oh does he have less than 100 just 126 that's crazy 
That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Anybody who's won 1,200 games usually has 800, 900 losses, yeah, too. because you've played that many yeah, games. Yeah, not him. And UConn has now been in the Sweet 16 15 of the last 16 years. I mean, in the uh, Final Four. I was going to say. In the Final Four. That's incredible. That's pretty good. 15 of the last 16. To the Final Four. The only year they didn't make it was last year. They got uh, upended by Ohio State before they got to the Final Four. Well, at least we got some good basketball here coming down yes, to the end of college. Do. Yes, we did. Next bet was Padres and Cardinals over under eight total runs in the game, and it was six to two, so it was eight. Both of us said over, and it pushed. Advantage, push. Advantage, push. Right. Celtics, 18-point favorites over the uh, Charlotte. I almost called – you almost called the New Orleans Hornets yesterday. I almost called them the Charlotte Bobcats just now. Yes, we're about 10 years <laughs> Yes, I know. Charlotte Hornets, they uh, – were you chose Charlotte is what I'm trying to say. I chose the Celtics to win by 19 or more. They did not. They won 118, 104. So Chris wins this one. I had a really terrible showing uh, after a great showing last week. Uh, and then Zion Williamson versus uh, Devin Booker. I think uh, Devin Booker took this one by a little bit. I mean, Slightly. Zion had 30. Yeah. Devin Booker had 52. When he made eight threes. When he's hot, forget it. Caitlin Clark made nine. So. Sorry about that, Devin. You weren't the top three-point shooter of the night, but you still scored 52. So, yeah, I went three and one. You went one and three last yeah, night. unfortunately. All right, ready for tonight? Yeah. Okay, you know what else I want? I want you to look for this in the next day or two. So I think it would be a fun wager. Fun, huh? To wager on North Carolina State and UConn both winning both on the men's and women's side in the Final Four and meeting each other in the finals in men and Ooh. women. That could happen. I need a degenerate better friend to find that one. Somebody will find that. It, it, what would I, be have the, a, I have a website that I think I can What would be to. the odds of North Carolina State men and women advancing to the final, and then also UConn men and women advancing to I the mean, final? I mean, it's never happened, right? No, yeah, not like that. Said. That would be crazy. Uh, I got uh, the NIT for you tonight. Oh, sweet. It's the best I can do. Your guy. Cream, yes, Abdul Jabbar, otherwise Robbie. known as Milk Chamberlain. Robbie Avila is his real name. Otherwise known as Larry Nerd, yeah. <laughs> leads Indiana State against Utah. The Sycamores of Indiana State are favored by three and a half. I mean, the game is being played in the state of Indiana in the NIT semifinal. Uh, I'm going with Cream. Abdul Jabbar. You're going with Cream. Yep, I knew you would. You love that guy. I do. I'll take Utah. A little West Coast representation here, although right. it's kind of a road game, which worries me. me the game's being played at Butler, which is in Indianapolis. Indiana State is, I right think, there. very close to yeah, that. I would think so. Where, did, where, where are they from? Indiana State, Terre Haute. Oh, Indiana. Terre Haute. I, I, do you know that? Yes, I do. All right. My mom grew up in Indiana. Oh, I've been to Indiana. Shout out times. to your uh, to your mom. Yeah, she's who grew up a Hoosier. Yes, everybody she, from Indiana is called a Hoosier. Yeah, she. My grandpa went to Indiana University. He was a Hoosier, and he always okay. told me that Indiana Hoosier football team is never going to be good. Never going to be good. And he's right. He was right about that. <laughs> he right? was right about God, that. Indiana has not had a good football team since before I was alive. <laughs> that's a long time ago. That's that's. Uh, some would call that eons ago. Eons. I haven't heard that word in a while. Yeah. Terre Haute is on the border. Of Illinois. Okay, I know where it is. Terre Haute to Indianapolis, 77 miles. Not bad. Uh, all right, we tried it last night. We didn't get a result, so we'll try it again tonight. Cardinals, Padres, over-under, total runs, again, is eight. Now, it was eight last night with the uh, number five starters pitching. Yes, yes. It's eight again, but you got Darvish pitching tonight, and you got Michaelis, who's pretty good on the other side. So I'm going to say under tonight. Under mm, under mm, eight mm, tonight. Mm. What do you like tonight? I feel like we're gonna do this roller coaster thing, so I'm gonna go over. Over. Padres are offense gonna explode tonight, you said. Yes, and then all right. The New York Yankees are five and zero for the first time since 1992. They attempt to go six and zero tonight in Arizona against Zach Gallen and the Diamondbacks. Yankees are favored by one and a half runs. Scraby. Um They've got to lose at some point, so I'm going to say the Diamondbacks. Take Arizona tonight. I'll take Arizona just because of Zach Gallon. The Milkman. The Milkman. 
pitching on a night when Milk Chamberlain is playing basketball. Oh, look at that. A lot of what milk. are the odds? I don't know. <laughs> well, we are doing the Daily Gambit, so we should oh, know the odds. Oh, we should know the odds, right? Lakers at Toronto tonight. Boy, the Lakers are on, seriously, a very good roll. They're 12.5-point favorites over the Raptors. Is LeBron playing? Uh, I would think with a 12.5-point spread, he's playing. If the uh, if he wasn't playing, the uh, spread would be a lot less. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I'll still take Toronto. Lakers at the end of a long road trip. Got to be a little weary. Maybe they don't win by quite as many. I'm going to go Lakers. The Lakers have been really playing well. Great basketball. I'm going to go Lakers. Go Lakers. You got them. And finally, Sacramento Kings tonight, three points over the L.A. Clippers. With this knowledge, Kawhi Leonard ruled out with a sore knee. Not only that, he is returning to Los Angeles to receive more treatment. You know, Kawhi Leonard is – he's Kawhi Leonard. He's won two finals MVPs for two different teams. But he does get hurt. He does. Yeah. I mean, I hate that because, I mean, a lot of people think that that he's – you know, they want to attach the word soft to Kawhi Leonard. Oh, and it's just so soft. unfair. I mean, knee injuries are really bad, especially in basketball. Yeah, he's had it for a long, long time. But I will say he does go home a lot when he gets hurt. Doesn't stick with his team and rehab on the road. <laughs> he went home the other night when you were all upset well, about Well, yeah, that. it was like the first quarter and his back I flared know. up. I, I don't want to do this because I'm half joking and I know that there might be people listening that know him. There's a lot of people that love Kawhi Leonard. I, out I, there. I'm not saying that he's a bad dude, so don't come at me. Just saying. Be careful. Uh, who do you like here? Sacramento or oh, the sorry, Clippers? I'm going with Demonis Sabonis. Demonis. And the Kings. He just keeps on rolling, that guy. I'll take uh, Sacramento also. Oh, Danny no Chula Vista Island. said they're missing Monk tonight. Kings? Yeah. Thank you, Danny Chula Vista. As long as they're not missing Sabonis, I'll take the Kings anyway. All right. all right, there are our picks for tonight. We'll see how it all turns out. We'll break for traffic. When we come back, how about this, Scraby? I got breaking news. What? The Padres have made a trade. No, they have not. Have they? Stick around. I'll tell you who and what. What? And where. What? When we come back with more Gwen and Chris after a check of traffic.
All right, welcome back to Gwen and Chris. Am I am I imagining that people had all these crazy thoughts dancing through your mind during the last uh, break there? Who did we trade? Who I had did we to, get? I had to like don't beg tell you. me we parted with Joe Musgrove. Oh no, no, that would never happen. Here's the trade. Today, according to the Padres public relations staff, the Padres acquired left-handed pitcher Jackson Wolf from the Pittsburgh Pirates in exchange for infielder Kevin Pichardo or Picardo. Uh, the club has optioned Wolf to Triple A El Paso. So he's back. That's, that's the big move. Um, yeah, it's great. He pointed out. He goes, "What didn't we have that guy?" And I was like, "What? I've never heard of Jackson Wolf." But you're absolutely right. The Padres did have Jackson Wolf, and he did pitch in a game for them last year. He uh, pitched uh, at Detroit. Yes, I remember this in a game against the Tigers. I think he got the win. He, he went five innings. He allowed six hits. And three runs, he got the win. He was one and oh for the Padres. What date last was this game? Year. Uh well, let me see. Because now, I now think I have to call up another category. Here. I, I can't remember for sure, but I think he got traded directly after that, maybe like in the next couple weeks or maybe well, even got, the next week. He got traded along with a couple of other guys, uh Alfonso Rivas and a minor leaguer. They went to the Pirates. The Padres in exchange picked up. Oh, wait. Go for it. They picked up Dick Mountain <laughs> and they picked up G Man. G Man Choi. Choi. Yeah. I forgot that, about him. G Man Choi and Rich Hill came in that trade for Jackson Wolf. Apparently, AJ Preller had buyer's remorse. He wanted Jackson Wolf back. And he got him back. Well, I so think at the go. time our conversation around Jackson Wolf was he had a pretty good debut and you wouldn't mind seeing him make another start or right. like be out of the bullpen or something like that. And then he got traded. So maybe that I think what we were saying is that little bit was the audition for the Pirates to, you know, it was enough the for trade. them. To, it was enough for them to give us Rich Hill. Yes. I'll be honest with you. The trade was made on July or the Sorry, he appeared in a game on July 22nd last year. Um, but my point is the Padres would have been better off starting Jackson Wolf down the stretch than they would have been starting Rich Hill. It's a very good fair point. enough to say, is it not? It, it's now that fair. we look back on it. What was Rich Hill was pretty much bombed every time he pitched for the oh Padres? My gosh, let me go look I hate up to his tell game you. log because it wasn't good, it wasn't pretty. And you know, so they, they might as well have just they taken might as the well chance. just been better off, you know, letting Jackson Wolf start those games. I'm looking from last year. Did not work with Rich Hill. Uh, all right. His first start was, I think it was on Sunday night baseball against the Dodgers. He gave up six runs. Yeah. He gave up six runs. He gave, yeah, it was not good for him. I mean, what was Rich Hill's? It's hard to find his stats anywhere, but with the Padres, he was one and four with an ERA of 8.23. Yeah. So suffice to say, Jackson Wolf could have done that. Yeah, I think probably so. Probably even better. I, I would hope something yeah, better than right. that. So Jackson Hill is back with the Padres. Wolf. Wolf. Jackson Wolf, right? Jackson Hill. <laughs> we Jackson. don't want no. Jackson Hill. No, we don't. He's, he's not even a Major League Baseball player. <laughs> that would do us no good whatsoever. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so uh, that's the Padre trade of the day. Scraby's got a lineup for tonight. Yes, I did. Ready to uh, regale us with that? Yeah, I did. No, oh, you don't have it anymore. You've lost it. Yeah, I've lost it, but I'm going to get it back. This happens to me from time to time. I have the thing all ready to go, and it resets on me. But here we go. Da -da -da -da. Bogarts, Tatis. Wait a minute. You can't give the lineup without the organ oh, music. you're right. You're right. Doesn't is, doesn't work. This is bad. There we go. Batting first for your Padres. <laughs> right, I don't know if we need Playing all second base, <laughs> Xander Bogarts. All right, good enough. Batting good. second. Fernando Tatis Jr. playing right field. Jake Cronenworth batting third at first base. Manny Machado DHing as the cleanup hitter. Hassan Kim playing short, batting fifth. Jerks and Profar batting sixth, playing left field. Campusano batting seventh, playing catcher. Tyler Wade playing third, batting eighth. Jackson Merrill in center field, batting ninth. Now, Jerks and Profar, where are you at with him right now, Chris? Um, first of all, I love him. He yes. cracks me up. He's got the best attitude in the That's not a have. question. I'm not a, I know, but I'm want to get that in there before I say, 
Jerson Profar should not be batting sixth every day for the San Diego. Every Padres. day is the keyword. I, I just don't see him as a six hitter anymore. Maybe eight, but I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, Tyler Wade and Jackson Merrill, young guys, you know, they, they need to be at the bottom of the order to keep pressure off of them. I would at least, I know they want to go left, right, left, right there. So that's why they go Kim Profar Camposano, but I'd like to see Camposano get more at bats than Profar. Campus I, yes, right a now, good bat. Profar, absolutely. Profar is not an automatic out. No, I'm looking at but he's stats. not the guy I really want, you know, to keep a rally going. He's just he's not a good enough. It's not good enough to be in the six hole for a you know pennant winning team. I, I don't know how you feel about this, Chris, but he does have five walks on the year, which oh, is pretty wow. good. I one one in the last three games, one I each love, in the last three games. I love walks. sitting two sixty three, two RBIs. I, I, it's just it, it's good enough. But it's is not. that going to keep up? It's not good enough. I, I don't well, think it's good enough. There's, they don't have a left fielder. You're hoping that it'll be good enough. Here's here's something that needs to be discussed, and we'll get to it. You know, when we have a little more time, because we're up at the bottom of the hour. Here's something that needs to be discussed. What are the Padres going to do when Manny Machado starts playing third base again? Who's going to be their DH? That's a good question. I mean, are you ready to go through a whole season with? Tyler Wade or Eggy Rosario as your DH. Now you need a proven guy as a DH, or you at least some it. guy who's going to give you pop. It's what that's right. You need some pop from the DH position. You can't just anyway. Alex on the chat said, Who else would you put in? The real question is, when are we trading Polly? And I do see a trade possibly at some point for a left fielder. And that I, would help with the third base situation. It would help maybe with the DH situation. It would make this team a lot more whole if they were to trade for a left fielder. Yes, or just sign one. I happen to know of one who's not playing anywhere right now. Oh, yes, there Could is. Could be had for probably a few million dollars. Tom, I don't know if Tommy we Pham? Yeah. He, uh, Matt says, we had the king of walks. And look where that got us, which is Soto. <laughs> nah, I know, <laughs> which now, is true, man. Now, now Soto's the greatest player in baseball history after what he's done in the first. Five you know, games I said this. Yankees. I said this on the Scraby Show. Uh, let's see, like maybe when Jerickson Profar first got signed by the team, but I, I just said I don't see this being a year-long solution. I just don't see it. What Jerickson in left field being the full-time starter no. in left field? No, I don't see it either. I don't. Now is he very important to this team? Absolutely. Yeah, he's a good good bench player. He's a, should not be starting every day batting sixth. No, probably I, not. He's just he's not that good. Not good enough. All right, take a break. But he's good back. enough for now. None. Nah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's put it this way: he has to be good enough yes, for now. There we go. We can agree on we that. We don't have any other choices at yes, the moment. We can agree on that. Uh, Mike Schilt doesn't have any other choices at the moment. We're going to find out more about Mike Schilt. Of course, he used to be with the Cardinals. St. Louis Post-Dispatch writer Derek Gould covered and followed Mike Schultz's career before he got to San Diego. Let's get some insight when we come back on Gwen and Chris.
Mediterranean food, like I do, Scraby does, Tony does. Try Spiros, authentic Mediterranean cuisine. Not only in Coronado and La Jolla, but if you're on your way to the ballpark, they have a Spiros location at Petco Park, third baseline on the main concourse. Grab a little Spiros tonight out at the ball game. For dining or takeout options, visit SpirosCuisine.com. There are four undefeated teams in Major League Baseball. Padres, of course, are not one of them. Padres have a record of three and four. They mm. take on the two and three Cardinals tonight mm, mm, mm. at Petco Park. But the four undefeated teams are New York Yankees, mm-hmm. five and zero oh, for the first time since nineteen ninety two. Oh. Pittsburgh Pirates, five and zero. Oh. Detroit Tigers, four and zero. Oh. Good for them. Yeah, Tigers have only given up eight runs in four games. And the Milwaukee Brewers are four and zero. Oh. They just finished off a victory over the Minnesota Twins, three to two. So the Brew Crew, under the leadership of former Padre interim skipper Pat Murphy, off to a nice start. That is true. Good for them. Yeah. Christian Yelich, off to a good start for you. I hit another home run today. He did. Uh, there are two, sorry, three winless teams in baseball. White Sox. A lot of people thought they'd see that on uh, 4 I just hate that for Stephen Wilson. New York Mets. You got to hate that for your boy, Frank Marchese. No, nah, I don't care about you that. You don't care about Frank? No, no. Frank's Do you hear good. that, Frank? He doesn't care about you. I care about you, Frank. I know you're suffering. You call him Francis. Francis Marchese. He's the uh, studio engineer for Padre Baseball. Right here at 97 through the fan. Uh, Mets are 0 4. The 0 5 team is the Marlins. Off to an 0 5 start. I don't like to see that because Skip Schumacher. I like Skip, but I think the Marlins. He follows me on Twitter, so I'm cheering for I, him. I said it yesterday in our picks. I think the Marlins had so many one run wins last year. It might even out on them. This you did year. make a good point with that. We'll see if that happens. All right. All right. Mike Schilt. I think we're all happy to have him as the skipper of the Padres, at least so far. Most people out there, Padre fans, Padre Nation, as it were, seem to pretty much blamed all of last season on Bob Melvin. Happy that he's out and happy that Mike Schilt's here. I'll say one thing, as you'll find out in this interview with Derek Gould of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, they weren't exactly thrilled to lose Mike Schilt in St. Louis. Here's some more I'm on the Padres manager from a guy who knows him well after we check traffic. From the 97.
little bit of technical issues on my end. When we get back, we're playing Chris versus the fans, 833-288-0973. Get in line for that.
Hey, away we go with the 4 o'clock hour. Welcome back into Gwen and Chris. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace Studios. Tony Gwynn Jr. down at Petco Park. He'll rejoin us shortly for our Big Five. At the bottom of this hour, coming up on a little Chris versus the fans, where Scraby asked me a bunch of questions. If I get them wrong and you get them right, you got a chance to go to Las Vegas. In fact, you could qualify for a two-night stay at the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Two tickets to Cool in the Gang. They're back by popular demand after multiple sold-out shows. The legendary funk group, Cool and the Gang, returns to the stage at the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. The residency runs through 2024. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. They do celebrate. I think they did. You know, celebrate good oh. times. Yeah, that's uh, cool in the is game. It? Uh-huh. Let me see. Pretty sure. Uh, Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino features newly designed premier rooms, part of their $70 million room renovations, home of legendary Vegas fun. Are we giving away these other yes, tickets as well? we are. Wow. And you're right, by the way. Yeah, that is cool in the game. Uh, Eric Clapton, the all-time great guitar player and singer. You win a Hall of Famer, Eric Clapton. You get a pair of tickets to see his concert at Pechanga Arena on October the 8th. Tickets don't go on sale until this Friday at 10 a.m. on access.com. That's AXS.com. So you can get Clapton tickets before they even go on sale. Yes, that's right. If you win Chris versus the fans, I have one question for you, Scraby, before we start. What's that? Who is Ronel Blanco? He threw a no-hitter last night. Very good. Start. That's right. Second Boom. St- was it his second start ever? Eighth, I think. Oh, eighth. I think it was the eighth. I had never heard of him. Until he, uh, I well, yeah, I even heard until he made either. until he made some history last night. Good for him, Arnel Blanco. Is the no hitter? Oh, we don't have time for this right now. But is the no hitter not as cool anymore? It's still cool, but it does just seem so arbitrary. Because it happens guys like Arnel Blanco throw no hitters, but you Darvish doesn't. Yeah, you know true. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Of course, no Padre pitcher is ever going to throw another no hitter. Has Justin Verlander ever thrown a no hitter? I think he's thrown a few. I All think right. he's thrown three. Wow. I was going to okay. say I don't think any Padre pitcher will ever throw a no hitter because they never let him complete a game. That's true, but we do have our one no hitter. Thank goodness. No, for no, that. Joe. Thank goodness for that. All right, let's play some uh, ball here. If you had one shot, one opportunity to take down the human almanac himself, howdy do. Now is your time. Listen to me, this guy is dangerous. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know what you're in for. Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. You are also right on that, Chris. What's that? Justin Verlander having three no hitters to yeah, his name. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, that's what I'm talking about when I think no hitter. I think. Legendary names like that. Nolan Ryan. Yeah. Sandy Koufax. Yeah. Nolan Ryan had, do you know how many Nolan Ryan had? I think he had, did he have, wait, he he had seven? Seven. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think that record will hold up for a while. His Netflix documentary, I can't remember what it's called, but it is really good. Nolan Ryan had some insane record where he had a quality start or better 150 times or something in his career that he did not get the win. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he, it, was an, it was just an inordinate number. But I, he never somebody, won a Cy Young, right? I don't think so. He never had a good – that really never had a good record. He just had a lot of strikeouts. See, that is where but they go in, wrong. But he was impossible to hit. But teams would always be able to cobble together a couple of runs against him and beat him. Tony Gwynn Sr., tell you, that was the guy he, he couldn't hit at all. Yeah, he didn't like facing him. No, from what we nobody hear. did. From what we hear. From what we heard, yeah. Tony was pretty uh, pretty uh, adamant about that. All, all right, right, let's go to our game here. Yeah, you have to make it through three questions. Each question will get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get it wrong and Chris gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Chris gets it wrong, then you move on to the next question or you win. And good, uh, Chris versus the fans is brought to you by Good Guys. 23rd McGuire's Del Mar Nationals, April 5th through the 7th at the Del Mar Fail- Fairgrounds. To register your vehicle or purchase tickets, visit www.good-guys.com slash DMN. And we are now going to get into the game. Let's go 
I don't know we've ever talked to this person. Oh, if you're a first-time player, let us know before we get into it and you get the first question. By the way, before today. I finish this, I just looked it up. Tony Gwynn against Nolan Ryan. Mm -hmm. Hated him so much that he only hit 302 against him in his career. That's garbage. <laughs> just garbage. <laughs> That's how tough Nolan Ryan was on Tony Gwynn. Oh, man. He hated him. He couldn't stand to face him. He only hit 302 against that him. That is crazy. That's so funny. <laughs> All right, Lance, you are up. How are you today? Hi, Lance. I'm doing well. Good to All have right. you on the board uh, here. Are you ready? On the board. I'm ready. Or on right. board. On board. Here we go. Question number one. What number does Caitlin Clark wear? Uh, I believe she is 22. Nice Winner. job. Nice job. Did you uh, did you watch the game last night, Lance? At all? Uh, I was at dinner for my wife's birthday, and so ah. it was on in the background at the restaurant. So very good that you uh, very good that you took the wife. Why didn't out? you tell your wife you wanted to watch the game? Yeah, instead? you should have said sorry. It's your birthday, honey, <laughs> but everybody's watching this basketball game. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, that that yeah. would have gone over last well. Last year it was the Aztecs buzzer beater. Oh, oh man, you've had a lot of uh, your wife's birthday is right during March Madness. Yeah, yeah. that's a that's yep. like a landmine yeah. zone right well, there. Lance Lance, Lance is, uh, he's doing the right thing. He You're is. doing the right thing. He is. I was right. just joking about saying you want to watch the game. All right, here we go, Lance. Question number two. Um. All right. The Dodgers and the Padres lead baseball with 47 runs scored this season. What National League team is second with 39 runs scored this season? Um, I will guess the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks. It's a good guess. It's not the Diamondbacks. No. They got no. 14 in one inning. They did. They did. Who has 30 what? 39. Stay there, Lance. Uh, Braves? Bravo. Got to be the Braves. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> wrong. That was great. Lance, you should see the look on his face. He is so happy when oh, they get I one was. wrong. I was. <laughs> he <laughs> loves it. If you've never watched Chris versus the fans on YouTube, search, mm -hmm. go to YouTube, search 97.3 The Fan next time and watch how And then happy when I get I one get. right, he just, he's so deflated. Answer. Lance was on to it. Diamondbacks were fourth, but the third team is the Pirates. Oh, they Pirates. have 39 oh, runs. Really? They're undefeated. Well, I know that. I just didn't know they'd scored as many runs as the Braves. Seems like the Braves always. Oh, uh, let me see where the Braves game. are. I still have it up. Uh, the Braves are, they're tied with the Diamondbacks for th with 34. Good. Okay. All right. Here Lance, we go. Lance, you go to the finals. Question number three for the Eric Clapton tickets and a qualification to Las Vegas. <laughs> There are two active pitchers right now with over 400 saves each. Name both Ooh. of them. What's that? Oh. Name oh. and logo. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Scrabby, you're such a you're such a Kevin Jansen and oh. Craig Kimbrell. <gasps> wow. Did he get it? That was incredible. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Chris is giving you a standing, I gotta give a ovation. standing ovation for that. I got to get. You know what? Get hold up. on. Hold on. Get up. I'm giving you a standing ovation Let for that, go. too. Lance, that Woo! was impressive. That was impressive. Not only that. All right. Stay there, Lance. I got to get your information in <laughs> so a couple So often minutes. when people get those, you, you know, it's like the 20-minute delay, and you wonder whether they looked it up. Lance just went right with his gut. Right you know? with it. Just right with his gut. That was very good. Some Lance. of the, although you did get question number two wrong, you did name a team that was high up. So I'll give you that. No, that was some of the best plan we've ever had. Because I didn't think anyone was going to get that. Would you no. have gotten that last one? Uh, Possibly. I, I would have had to think it through. I couldn't have just like gotten it. Can you I name the have... third? Oh, now you're going to no, put no, no, him no. under the gun. No, can you name the third closer? Okay, so. Those two guys are over 400. Only guys that are active with over 400 saves each. There's one other guy who's active, but he only has over 300 saves. Do you oh know who it is? God. You know what, Lance? You don't have to answer oh, that. Oh, no, it's not you. I was asking you. Oh, you're asking me that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, it is Aroldis Chapman. I don't feel like looking it up or thinking Chapman. about it. Aroldis so. Chapman. Good. All right, very good, Lance. Stay on the line. You're a deserving winner of Chris vs. the Fans. Absolutely today. are. Could be on your way to Las Vegas. You know, Chris, Sometime I have... soon. You will be on your way to Eric Clapton. That's true. Which is a nice prize to get. 
Felt a whole lot better about Eric Clapton until Scraby told me the saddest story I've ever heard yesterday. I thought you knew. About that uh, song he wrote. Tears in Heaven. Oh, my God. Is I actually listened story? to it last night again, and I was like, man, this is a sad song. Probably had tears coming down here. Well, I thought about Lucky, and I thought about yeah stuff like that song. and i was like lucky and we i didn't hung. realize how sad that song was until you told me how sad it, I'm sorry. it was Thank uh we, we need to go to break because i have we have a lot going on this hour Chris. all right we're gonna uh, take a break when we come back it was the most highly anticipated basketball game we have seen in a long time and it delivered on that anticipation we'll explain when gwen and chris continues after a check of traffic from the
All right, Lance came through big time there. Got the uh, Chris versus the fans victory with a really nice get on the uh, the two 400 save guys in Major League Seriously. Baseball. Real good, Lance. Kenley really Jansen good. and uh, Craig Kimbrell. Can't believe Kimbrell's still going out there. I saw him today. And I'm a little surprised that the Orioles picked him up. Like, I know they lost their closer. Oh, yes. They, I can't remember his name. I know, but he was really he, good. He got hurt at the end of year. last year. Yeah. But I don't know. that. We'll see if Kimbrell's the answer. Um, I asked Lance. It's Gwen and Chris, by the way, at 418. Tony rejoins at the bottom of the hour for the Big Five. I got a doozy of a Big Five. Good. You guys need to prepare with more time. <sighs> Okay, go ahead. I'm Sorry. not preparing. Okay. Don't care if it's a doozy or not. Okay. Last night's game between LSU and Iowa, that was supposed to be a doozy. Yes. And nobody wanted to miss it. It was expected to be one of the lar- most watched games in women's college basketball history. We watched the pregame of it. It did not disappoint. No. Nope. 12.3 million viewers last night say the ratings. How many is 12.3 million, you ask? First of all, it's more than any women's college basketball game ever. It's more than any game of last year's NBA Finals. It's more than any game of last year's World Series. Whoa. This is an Elite Eight game. This is an Elite Eight women's college basketball game. More than any World Series game from last year. More than any Thursday night football game played last year. Granted, well, those are streamed. Find it. People can't find I'm it. just saying. And more, this is the best one. More than any college football regular season game played this past season. Wow. Except for Ohio State, Michigan. Wow. That's that's it that's beat incredible. out every college football game played last season, every game, except one. That's incredible. You know, congratulations to women basketball. Now, I will say that I think women's basketball, a general comment here, but probably has more women viewers than a lot of those other events that I just mentioned. Okay. The World yeah. Series, et cetera. Maybe. But anytime you're in that kind of company, come on. That's 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 big that's big things. So that is big thing. Congratulations. Did you to those teams? I watched the game. I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was great. I, I was a little upset that it, you know, LSU kind of went cold there for a while and fell behind. I wanted it to be a little closer game just to be, you know, a little more memorable. Yeah. But you know, Caitlin Clark was she made it memorable. Oh, my goodness. 41, 12 assists. That's the part that got me. I mean, I already know she could shoot like crazy. But her passing was the thing that really was impressive. I wonder how many people will watch Friday night when they play UConn. I, I I think it'll be another pretty big crowd. I don't know that it will be as big, but it probably will be big because Caitlin Clark carries the audience. She well, she's going to be in the game Friday night. She's playing again against UConn. Taps has an interesting uh, point. I'm curious to see what San Diego's share was for the ratings. I believe 100% a WNBA team would thrive here. Potentially. B Free says, let's get more women out to watch the SDSU women's team. I'll, I'm, I'll hear here to that. Yes, you'll hear here to I'll that. I'll hear here to that. I Chris got room. around them all the time. I have I have room. You can come on out and enjoy the games with me. I mean, yeah. They played in the, the, the Mountain West Championship. They did. They made it all the way. They had a great season. Did you mention the betting? I, I, oh, I didn't mention that. Go ahead. What, yes. do, you, what do you have on the sports uh, books? It was the most bet on game ever also. Well, it was, yeah, sports books um, for FanDuel. They said it was the most bet game in FanDuel's history for a women's, women's sports. Women's game or any game? Uh, for women's games. It was the biggest betting event all time for women's sports, according to wow. FanDuel. And in the last week, according to ESPN, in the last week, it drew more bets than any NHL game, Major League Baseball game, or NBA game. Wow. That's really incredible, I got to say. It also, you know, when we start talking about this, Chris, it does make me think that we shouldn't be betting on college sports because it's an amateur. Well, I guess it's not really amateur not race too much anymore. anymore, but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I, I, I wish the look, we've already seen some of the problems crop up well, in the gambling like, world recently. Caitlin Clark is going to be fine, but 
these FanDuel's making more money than they have ever made on a women's basketball game. Yeah, what game. about the uh what about the backup point guard for LSU? Yeah, I don't think she's making she's five probably not dollars. making that kind of money oh, and she could have an effect on the outcome of that game. She could. A big effect. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Uh one other thing from the UConn USC game, by the way, last night. Juju Watkins of USC scored 29 points in defeat. She set the all-time record for most points ever scored by a freshman in one season. She broke the record of a young lady named Tina Hutchinson who played in the mid-80s at San Diego State. Oh, wow. There you go. I did her games as the public address announcer really when i was going to school at san diego state in the mid 80s so it sounded like <laughs> chris Ello here on the call basket by tina hutchinson <laughs> <laughs> right. it, was, it was a long time ago though right <laughs> yes it, it was almost 40 years ago that tina hutchinson broke these records and set that, that record and it lasted for four decades. And I remember Tina Hutchinson. She played, obviously, for the Aztecs, and people kind of forgot about her. She played only two years, and then injuries took their toll. But she was just like 20 years ahead of her time. She was so good and athletic for the women's game. And uh, they got to the Sweet 16 with her on the roster. They didn't go any further. But I was it was kind of cool to see Tina Hutchinson's name pop up on the screen last yeah, night. Yeah, that is cool. I, I feel bad the, for uh, some of those old time players that like never will get any sort of recognition that they deserve. Bob for being Ryan, as great as they Bob are. Ryan had an interesting comment today, the uh, great columnist for the Boston Globe. He said, "You know, we're talking about women's basketball right now." He said, "I've talked about it more in the last week than I have in fifty years combined." He said, "But honestly, if you look back on women's basketball," Lisa Leslie, I don't know, Tarazi's still playing, but you can go back. Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca Lobo. You can go back and you can find some amazingly good women's players in the 80s and 90s. Don Staley was one, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. before go. becoming a coach. But so many great players then that nobody gave any attention or credit to. You know, now these young ladies are – you know, reaping some of the rewards of the groundwork set by their predecessors. I will say, what, what, um, branching off of what Bob Ryan said about how he's talked more co women's college basketball in the last week than he has in 50 years. Yeah. we. I mean, we've talked more women's college basketball than I've ever talked in my life. Of course. And, and I don't feel like we're talking about it to force it. I feel like we're talking about it because we're genuinely interested well, about it. Well, not only that, it's what people are talking about. True. It's the water cooler talk. My buddy uh, Scott, who I play golf with on Tuesdays, first thing he said, I watched the games last night. What'd you think? I don't believe he's ever asked me that before. <laughs> that's that's huge. It's huge. So uh, Tap says uh, the same night that you called her games, World War of the Worlds aired. So <laughs> thank you, Tap. Do you even know what that is? War yes. of the Worlds. Do you know the old Orson Welles? Yes, that's spoof. That's maybe one of the most brilliant things that's ever happened in, in American history. I'll say because if you don't know the story of War of the Worlds, look it up. It, say like 1930s. It's not the Tom Cruise movie. No, it's a it's a 1930s radio bit, and people it, thought it was real. People thought it was real, and not only did people think it was real, but the the Orson Welles was the one who put it all together. It was a radio theater production yeah the aliens had landed that aliens had landed in i believe the los angeles area and people in los angeles freaked right out people, people were running through the streets yes i mean just scared to death despite the fact that every 15 minutes on the broadcast they said this is only a play this is only <laughs> this is not real life People didn't, didn't work. They didn't want to hear that. No. They only heard the actual show. Because it's brilliant. 
Oh, it is I mean, it, it's not like brilliant because people like started killing each other and it was, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. But look up if you don't know anything about that, it's an incredible piece of American history. War of the World. I know we got a, uh, a 13 or 14 year old listener. I can't, it, that comes in the chat every once in a while. I think his name is uh, David. Okay. Uh, he, David, I know you're one of those people listening. Go look up War of the Worlds from the early 1900s. Okay. We got to get to the big five. So let's yes. take a, a quick break. Gwen and Chris comes back. Much, much more still ahead, leading toward Padres Cardinals later on. Many of the.
All right, welcome back to Gwen and Chris. 4.33 is the time. Tony's ready. I'm ready. Let's do a big five, Scrape. When we check on the latest in sports, only the most important topics and questions are brought to light. Stop what you're doing and listen. These news stories will... There you go. It's that time of the show when we check on the latest in sports. Only the most important topics and questions are brought to light. Stop what you're doing and listen. These news stories will astound and amaze you. The one, the only. Oh my God, who the hell cares? The Big Five starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right. I wish we could just like fast forward time into game 60 or something. I don't like the early game part of the MLB season because I overreact to everything far too much. And so I'm overreacting, guys. I'm uh, feeling a little weird about this team. I'm feeling a little bit of shades of last year. I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety bubbling to the surface. Yeah. And I have a question for you. Number five. What you got? Chris is going to love. Tony's going to be up first, though. All right. Last year, we started off the year as we all know we did. And we're like, hey, once they gel, water is going to find its level at some point, everybody. And then we said, well, they're still gelling. And then they were still gelling, and then we know what happened with 2023. This year, we didn't want to do that again. Tony, do we need to be patient as this team gels? <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I Do we need to be patient as this team gels? <sighs> um, I don't even need to see I, Tony's I, reaction. I, I don't even know how to, like, really – answer this question without laughing you can laugh at I just, me i just think that we just have to let the season kind of unfold a little bit more before we start you know feeling any type of way can we let's just let's just watch baseball for i don't know at least can i mean and, and i'm i'm i know i'm asking a lot but like for like a for like a month if you can't do a month, let's do let's do three weeks. This is he why can't I'm do it. This is why I'm asking this question. You guys are like he my can't therapist. Can't do it. He was already buying World <laughs> Series tickets last Friday after they were two and one. It was just really nice to see them come back and that win a game. It was like four days ago. <laughs> I know, Chris. But then they lost two, or yeah, they lost two to the Giants, and then now they are. Yeah, they've lost three out of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's time to to fire the manager. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I I think you guys know just, me enough by now that I'm not fire the manager yet not yeah, yet let's just yeah let's just let's just let the let's just let the baseball games be played for a little bit all right chris do we need to be patient as this team gels well, i don't know why it would be any different with this this team <laughs> as opposed to any other team but i mean I, I i'll just give you an idea how absurd it is to overreact to their record right now if you're going to overreact to their record then we're all getting ready for a Pirates Tigers World Series this year because both teams are undefeated. Good point. And I don't think anybody's planning on a Pirates Tigers World Series this year. Yeah. I mean, almost every team in baseball, save probably the A's and most likely save the Rockies, is going to win five in a row at one point. And that's what the Pirates have done. It's a good story, but. You know, you have to let a little more baseball be played before you crown them as champions, and I, I know you agree with that. Yeah. So if you agree with that, then you should agree with the fact that every team in baseball dozens of times this year is going to lose three out of four games. Dozens of times. It's going to happen often. So, you know, the last few games, obviously they haven't had the kind of pitching that they're going to need to be successful. And, um, you know, you fall behind three, four runs early in ball games like that. Um, you know, it's difficult and, you know, they haven't, they haven't pitched well yet, but no. seven games is unfortunately Ooh. not enough. Not even honestly, to be honest, be crazy. 
to say this, Scraby, but even 70 games isn't enough. I can't do 70. No, go, sure. that's, that's, I can't that's, do You're it. asking too much now. Yeah, I can't I know you're going it. too far. I know, but I'm trying to get him to understand that seven is absurd. I put my my I integrity had, on thought, the line last year for like 130 games. The Washington Nationals were in like last place with about a month and a half to go in the 2019 season. You know, not last, but they were way under 500. Yeah. They ended up winning the World Series. I'm not saying that that means this Padre team is a World Series team. But before we, you know, break the bank to bring in Tommy Pham or Brandon Belt and give up on everything that we're trying to do, you have to see a whole lot more baseball than this. Yeah. Sorry. Tony, anything else to add? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He Se does. <laughs> 70 games is is probably still not enough. I know. I, I, I know we're asking way too much from not just you, Scrape. I think there are a lot of people who are much like you who are already, you know, planning the funeral. The I am not planning the funeral. All right. Whatever. You uh, three out of four is just uh, disgraceful. Well, you know, when water finds its level, everybody. <laughs> you know, it's funny. They won like 14 of the last 16 games. The water was starting to creep up last it year. Was. It did not. But it just happened too level. late. It just happened they too they late. They ran out of games. Yes, they that's did. right. They they ran out of number four. Major League Baseball Players Association Executive Director Tony Clark received more than $4.25 million in compensation in 2023 with a uh, $3.25 million salary and a million dollar bonus, nearly doubling his total the previous year, according to financial reports released on Monday. The revelation of his salary, which was $2.25 million in 2022, comes in the wake of an uprising at the union in which attorney Harry Marino attempted to garner support from players to replace the union's deputy executive director, Bruce Meyer. And when I was trying to figure out what to ask about this, I, I came to this. Chris? Does this really matter to baseball fans? No, not even in the least. Uh, I, I would think some people think that Tony Clark makes too much money, but they're the same people that think that baseball players make too much <laughs> money. And they're the same people that forget that owners make way more money than all of them put together. So right. if Tony Clark was able to get four and a half million bucks out of the pockets of these rich owners – Good for him. What does Rob Manfred make? A lot more than that, I'm A thinking. ton more. Uh, you know, I mean, he's representing these guys, and, and, I mean, it's a great position to be in, And but salaries are continuing to skyrocket, and, and the owners and everybody should be happy in baseball. Revenues are, you know, skyrocketing around the, the sport. The uh, value of these teams continues to go through the roof. You know, there's enough for everybody, but as far as whether or not I don't even know who, what'd you say his name was? Bruce Meyer? Bruce Meyer was yeah. the, yeah. I, I don't even know what he did. So He was the uh, union's deputy executive director. He was a negotiator. But my, oh, the my, negotiator. My point being that if I if I didn't know what he does, I, I doubt too many fans know or care what he does. So, yeah. you know, it's good for Tony Clark. He's a San Diego guy. I'm happy when anybody can draw a bunch of money away from the owners because they get too much. His job is, is not easy either. Probably not. Probably it's probably as more as difficult, if not more so, than Rob Manfred's. Yeah, Rob you Manfred know? just gets drunk and Rob Manf trophies. Rob Manfred's got to represent thirty owners, right? Tony Clark's got to represent six, seven hundred players. Good point, Chris. That's Good point. that's a lot of people to be responsible for. Yeah, uh, Tony, does this really matter to baseball fans? No, it doesn't matter to baseball fans at all. It is an interesting thing, though, as a former player, reading some of this stuff and what's going down and and like the feel it gives you it, it was it was noted that um the uprise happened and then it got quickly was fell apart as more and more players when it got time to actually voting on that kind of stuff it's like yeah nah man he's 30 something years old i don't know if you know much yeah. enough about this uh but no i don't think the uh the fan the baseball fans really care just make sure the baseball's on the field Mm -hmm. and uh, the turnstiles are open for us to come through. That's all they care about. It's true. Number three. I'm going to ask you guys a tough question on this one. Caitlin Clark dropped 41 points on LSU, and the Hawkeyes are moving on to the women's Final Four. But on Undisputed this morning, Paul Pierce, he – I'm trying to cue up the video. <laughs> Paul Pierce <laughs> said this. Yeah, it's not it's, – let me it's, – it's beyond that key. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do it mm -hmm. to a bunch of black girls. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. That that made it like, oh, <laughs> that gained my respect. 
that gained my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm -hmm. here in, yeah. in, in Colorado, wherever. She mm -hmm. did it to some girls <laughs> from, from LSU, yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs, mm -hmm. and put them on her knee and spanked them. Spanked them. And so that, and it's, I know, but I didn't expect that. All right, so there you go, Paul Pierce. Um, does anybody else kept, catch Skip Bayless going, yeah, yeah, like just being the hype guy? Um, a, anyway, as you can imagine, this has caused a few feelings around uh, parts of this country. Tony, how do you feel about what Paul Pierce said? Um, I don't know that it's accurate. I mean, I don't know, and maybe it's just me. It, it, it When I watched that basketball game, basketball game, I wasn't, I wasn't seeing, you know, obviously Caitlin Clark was just bombing threes from literally all over the court. <laughs> um, she was being guarded by uh, Haley Van Lathan, who was, you know, right, white most of the most of the game. Um, I didn't. That's not what I was paying attention to. The, the The irony in it was in it in this is that when uh, the Lakers and Celtics used to play, part of the reason I think Larry Bird was given so much love from everybody black white whatever was because he was doing it against brothers basically and he was really the only one the thing is i don't see I, that's not what i'm looking at right now or yesterday when i watched that game it was two really good teams well matched a rematch of last year's finals um but i didn't see it that way uh but i i would be crazy to think that that is not what some people are seeing though that's i think we're we're trying to fool ourselves if that's if we believe that that's how everybody viewed it um the reality is paul is saying something on a the type of show where those type of things get said because people like us will talk about it <laughs> on our show i and fell for it that's what that's what drives it he he had to come up with something original to say about that particular game everything else has pretty much been said about it but mm. um i can see why that made people uncomfortable for sure chris how do you feel about what paul pierce said i feel crappy about what paul pierce said really yeah i do i this is we talked about this you and i yesterday going into this game i mean this is exactly what's wrong with the media that's covering sports right now is that they're lot they're they're latching on to this kind of stuff i mean stories of you know good versus evil white versus black uh yeah you know, class versus, you know, players that are, you know, uh, spouting off all the time. I mean, you know, we, we, we can't look at this as just a, a basketball game between Iowa and LSU, and it, it's really a shame. And I know that Paul Pierce has to come up with something different to say, but it doesn't mean he has to come up with something that is totally misguided and misplaced. And uh, to me, it's just fueling – the uh, whether you want to say misogynistic, uh, racist feel that goes along with some of these basketball games, but I, I just think it's it leads us down the wrong path. And for Skip Bayless, who's always an idiot as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> to basically be sitting there nodding his head and say, Yeah, you go, Paul, you go, uh, basically just shows how you know off you know beat this guy is and and, and where he's coming from. I, you know, Caitlin Clark. Unfortunately, you know, I, I wish she could just be a basketball player. I, I do. What Tony says about Larry Bird is true, but Larry Bird also played in the 1980s. We're in the 2020s now. I would like to think we can start moving beyond this. I know we probably never will get there fully, but it's unfortunate that this has to come up and we can't just appreciate a great performance. Uh, did you see, by the way, Ben Bolch? Put up an apology like yeah the la maybe times like 10 minutes article, before we talked about yeah, yesterday he did he put up an apology about you know his good versus evil story and you know it's, i'll tell you one thing i mean i watched the entire game last night to see if there would be any kind of slip-ups and i felt like lsu handled defeat with you know as much class as anybody could handle it with so good on those kids it's, 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 sorry. Sorry. go ahead it's it's one of those things that in the perfect world we would just be watching, you know, a basketball game. But that's that's just that's that is it's not I don't a know. perfect world. It, so. it, we as we as you watch that game, I don't know if it's because it's 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 I don't feel like it's marketed that way, right? Like I don't feel like it's marketed like 
but it there is a a, a a sense of bad versus good, right? And yeah, and and why is that? I mean, you know, you hate to you hate to like make it more than about sports, but we did watch a whole year of you know reports on Angel Reese, whatever you know was happening early when she wasn't playing, sure. and it all started after she won the national championship and she put the the ring up. I, it, nothing was it, prior to that point. It really all that much been said. And so it, it's hard not to feel that bad versus good feel that that game had on it. And now, I mean, I, I've, I've been uh, a defender of Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark uh, during the situation because, as they said, they don't hate each other. Yeah, but they that don't is, care. <laughs> that is literally how it, it feels when you watch that game. And I think, you know, Paul Pierce just didn't have the um, the right language, I guess, to massage that point in there a little bit better. He just got straight to the to the to the you know he didn't he didn't he didn't beat around the bush at all when he was talking about it. So it's 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 that's kind of the sports world we live in, unfortunately. Um, and you know whether it was Bird in the '80s, whether it was uh, white chocolate, Jason Williams in the 2000s. <laughs> there's always been that on the men's side when there's a white guy that can play. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem. <laughs> Kareem, yes. Here, here's the thing, though. I mean, you know, this conversation could go on because it, 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 there's so many different facets to yeah. it. But when Brock Purdy is tearing apart a mostly black NFL secondary, I, does anybody look at him and go, well, he's the great white hope because he's gunning passes in there against no, all these no, terrific be, athletes? Why not? No, because for as, up until maybe the last five, six years, that particular position has always been looked at as a Brock Purdy-like mm. position. Until, you know, recent years of the all of a sudden mobile quarterback, and as you've made the point of many a times, you, you know, in today's NFL, you need one of those type of quarterbacks. They happen to look, you know, a lot like myself in that regard. And so it's kind of changed. That's why it doesn't seem like that maybe in that particular sport, because you're right. I mean, there's always been a lot more uh, black men playing the football sport than white men. But at that particular position up until maybe five, six years ago. No. That was kind of the case. Yeah. I mean, we do comment when there's like a white wide receiver or something like Cooper exactly, Cup, like exactly. A white safety. Air how battles. about how about your boy? Uh, uh, oh, Christian McCarthy, McCaffrey. Be Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, like that's the that's running why back. He's he's the best running back in the league. And aside from being the best running back. The first thing that most people say, you oh, he's a white running back. Like he just <laughs> it's true. That he's does pretty not... good for a white running back. <laughs> he's pretty he's pretty good. <laughs> I period, feel like but... I feel like it's been talked about more with Caitlin Clark and LSU and Iowa women's basketball than all the other sports combined. And I think that that's what the women are upset about. They want to just be looked upon as athletes and players. All right, I hate to cut you guys off, but we got to. This moving. is a good. One. We had not had like a a, 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 a debate. Yeah. yeah, good conversation. There's a lot like to that. this one. That's all. yeah, there, there is. is. There is number two. So I guess this happened a month ago, but I'm now just seeing this. And I also got to mark off Googling ACC swimming controversies from my bingo <laughs> card. So here's where we're going with this, guys. Oh boy! A swimmer's disqualification on a technicality after winning a college conference final has led to one teammate branding the decision as the quote unquote dumbest rule in swimming. Owen Lloyd, a senior at North Carolina State, clinched North Carolina State in the news a lot for athletics. Man, they are balling there. Yeah, they're they're right Somebody's getting a raise. Seriously, clinched, he, they clinched the 1,650-yard freestyle title. Yeah. It's a long swim. Okay. At the How many ACC, laps is that? I don't even know. I'll have to do the calculations wow. on my supercomputer at home. Um, <laughs> but they won in February. He was promptly stripped of his title after climbing into the adjacent lane to celebrate with teammate Ross Dant, who finished in second, before the other swimmers had touched the wall. The meets head referee implemented Rule 2, Section 5. Uh, Chris is very well familiar with that one <laughs> of the NCAA rulebook, which states that a swimmer who changes lanes during a heat shall be disqualified, leading to his disqualification. Here's what I wanted to bring is his teammate, Ross Dant. Congratulations on one hand. Do you have any idea what happened and your emotions right now? I think that's the dumbest rule in swimming. Owen beat me fair and square. He used to be on that toe of the podium. 
he was excited, that's a huge fun for him, right? He earned that. He earned that, and that's his emotion, right? That's what we get in the sport of swimming when we do well. We train all year for a moment like that, and to have him disqualified, I think, is the dumbest thing ever. Do you mind he if works I... so hard every day. He is going to be on the number one trophy. I am not going to stand up there. Do you mind if I, uh, uh, if I ask you what rule did he break? We haven't even heard of up here. Whenever you win, you're not allowed. Well, the other team, or excuse me, the other swimmers are still swimming. You're allowed. You have to stay in your own lane. You're not allowed to jump or cross over the lane line into someone's lane. And in his celebration, which he earned, he came over to my lane. Now he. I'm sorry about the music in the background. It made everything a lot more uh, dramatic. I did not. Where did you pull that from? I. It, I'll just tell everyone, for some reason, history and memes on X posted that video. That's, that's why you have that music. Yeah, right and it, it, yeah, yeah. And so they put the music behind it because it was very dramatic and heartfelt. Um, Ross Dant, great guy. Chris, is this a dumb rule? Uh, signing your scorecard in golf is no longer the dumbest rule in sports. Oh, this is the dumbest <laughs> rule. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, anybody knows how stupid this. I, I don't know where they got it from. Obviously, they don't want you gallivanting around in another lane while people are swimming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, to go over and congratulate, you know, your your teammate and who's already finished, who's already finished as well. You know, I you know too often in officiating, and, and this goes for you know when I referee basketball games, people don't don't use common sense in you know in applying the rules. Mm. And obviously, common sense could have been applied better here, but it wasn't. Somebody stuck with the uh, rule with two, section five. Two, yeah, two section five. Come on, Chris. Two section. I know. Letter of I the law, you. Chris. Letter of the law. Uh, okay, fine. Letter of the law. <laughs> I don't think you can be our referee anymore. <laughs> yeah. You're not going by the book. <laughs> well, it's probably why I haven't been asked to referee like a CIF state final because I don't referee to the letter of the law. Sometimes I try to use common sense, and a lot of times the people in charge of that don't like that. But in this you case, it's pretty we're, ridiculous. We're going to have to band together this next offseason to make sure Chris gets us some CIF. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> we should make <laughs> it our campaign. Good luck with this, that. Is, this is getting ridiculous. Yeah, now. we need to. We, we, we're, but, uh, but, but I'm so fired up over this. I can't speak, but we need to campaign for this. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's All start right, something next year. All please. right. Tony, what do you think? Is this a dumb rule? Yes. Okay. It's really dumb. It's it's. As Chris said, it is now taking taking the lead in the dumbest rule in all sports. <laughs> like, w w w did he hop into a lane where there was actual swimming going on? I don't think so. I think no, he just, just uh, yeah, into his teammate's lane finished. who finished. Yeah, right. they're celebrating. Ridiculous. I mean, he That's just crazy. finished a swim across the Pacific Ocean. Let him celebrate. One thousand six hundred fifty yards is a long way Chris. all the way across the Pacific Ocean. Man. I mean, that's basically what that is to me. All right, we are one. really short on time. The A's have a lot going on right now, and they're once again giving their fans a conspiracy theory. Uh, to fuel them in their fire. The A's sent Astori Ruiz down to AAA, and here's what GM David Force said. Quote, we saw some better at-bats this spring, but the reality is to use his skills, he needs to get on base. He needs to be able to do that on a consistent basis. I'm hoping leading off every day at AAA, it's not a long stay for him down there. Uh, end quote. An A's fan group brought the fact that Ruiz and Brent Rooker had been seen wearing LDB wristbands which are known to support the A's staying in Oakland. They even were wearing them during games. So fans oh, are thinking Lord. these two guys were punished for supporting the fan group. Can't prove any of that, of course, but that doesn't change the fact that this is just the most recent example of poor decision-making from the front office of a team who clearly does not care about winning baseball games, guys. Ruiz, by the way, in seven ABs, had a triple, double, and a single. So, Tony, are the A's tanking even more? No. Don't like it when you're so no, down about my you know, theories. I mean, this is uh, if yeah, I watched. I mean, Asturi's probably in his seven at bats. He's got three knocks. That's awesome. But they, his skill set, as we saw here when he was a Padre, is getting on base, being able to cause havoc. And yes, in the seven at bats, seven opportunities he's had. Uh, He's been able to do something with it, but it's they don't maybe they don't view him as a fourth outfielder. They want him to be able to be in that leadoff spot and getting on base. And so he's gonna go down and work on it. He said it's not gonna be a, a long stay for him. So he can go down there and do what he has to do. He'll be back up and he'll probably be leading off for that team. But gotta gotta get on base. Gotta be more consistent. That's 
that's hey you know what you have to actually like earn the right to be a big leaguer and you have to do everything right to stay a big leaguer it's not always that easy sorry to put you on the clock no i just want to say one thing uh i did not know the a's even had a general manager (laughs) okay (laughs) it wasn't john fisher's assistant (laughs) i did not know they even had somebody making those kinds of decisions oh well now you do on that team yes now you do All all right that's it for the big five thanks guys when we get back
Into the happy hour we go. Final 34 minutes and 53 seconds of Gwen and Chris. Ahead of today's Padres pregame show, Sam Levitt will have that for you. Then at 640 tonight, Tony Gwynn Jr. is joined by Bob Scanlon in the booth. That's right, Scan Man. Calling tonight's game. Hey, Scan. Hey, Scan. Yeah, that'd be, you know, that'd be a really good good name he could use for like his Twitter account. Oh, you, you don't know. It, it is Hey, Scan. I do know. H-E-Y, Scan. That's why I brought it up. Well, it's because it's Hey, name. Scan. Hey, Scan. Wonder when we Tony ask him about that. I wonder when Tony Gwynn Jr. is going to grow the broadcaster's mustache. Ooh, Bob I don't Scanlon's know. I've never seen it. him with it. Bob Scanlon's done the mustache this year. Mark Grant has the mustache this year. Eric Gruppner, yeah, has the mustache this year. Where's your mustache? Yeah, you don't want to see that. <laughs> it's not good. I don't think I've ever seen Chris with any. I don't have any facial hair. You, you don't. It just doesn't grow. I only have to shave like every. Three, four days. Wow. I, I feel for people that have to shave like twice a day. That is brutal. That would be a chore. That you, do you want to know why I have a beard? Because <laughs> you're one of those people? I, well, no, I don't. I would have to probably shave every three days, but I hate doing it. Yeah. Uh, every two days, but right. I hate doing it. Um, We got some uh, Mike Schultz stuff for you uh, from before tonight's game. Get you ready for Padres and Cardinals. Before we get to that, couple of uh, news items. First of all, we were talking about it last hour, the LSU-Iowa basketball game, the uh, most watched women's game of all time. And even more so, it was more watched than any college football game that was played last season except for Ohio State-Michigan. That's the crazy part. It was watched more than any World Series game was last year. Another crazy part. Yeah. So women's college hoops. Hooping it up, doing it very nice, and it was like you said, a great game. So, they put on the best possible product for everyone. I would say Caitlin Clark uh, certainly rose to the occasion. Um, speaking of basketball, we don't talk much NBA on this show. First of all, there's no team here in San Diego. Second of all, the NBA, I we go back to that play when it wasn't the playing, it was the uh. The in-season tournament, mm -hmm. we thought that was kind of silly. No, you guys were in love with it. We did. Well, the reason we got we loved it because we liked the games. But my point is, is we haven't talked about the NBA since that was over. That's true. Right? That's actually a good point. And now, you know, we can't wait for the playoffs and I'll, you know, get back into it. But I haven't watched any NBA. I hardly knew that Joel Embiid wasn't in the lineup. <laughs> but for those of you who keep track of such things, he is back in the lineup tonight for the 76ers. Here is one of the he's been out since January the 30th. Here's one of the reasons why we don't talk about NBA. And this is a problem that the league has and they need to do something about it. But they even though they're trying to, they can't. Embiid is playing tonight, but his all-star running mate Tyrese Maxey is out with hip tightness. Mm. And they're playing Oklahoma City, which was without Shy Gil just Shit, Alexander. SGA. He's not playing. So if you went to see Philadelphia play Oklahoma City tonight, there's three or four star players that you could see, but you'll only get to see one of them. And that's the problem. That's a big problem for the league. You don't ever know if LeBron's playing or Kawhi's playing or any of these guys are playing. So nobody cares until the playoffs because they don't appear to care. That's true. Until the playoffs. That's why I'm not interested in the NBA. And, and but when the playoffs start, I know that everyone's going to play. I know everyone's going to be playing hard. Like I'm, those games are fun to watch. Like I'm going to uh, the Midwest in August. I still haven't told you guys about it, but I am. And we're going to go, I'm going to a family reunion in Dubuque, Iowa. And we're going to end up going to a Cubs game on the way home. I've never been to Wrigley. Okay. So I'm looking forward to it, but yes. it would be like me planning this trip to go to Wrigley field. And then them like cancel the game or something like that, because they don't have the players that can play or, they're well, the NBA is superstar. Their I mean, superstars aren't playing. There's nobody that the Cubs couldn't. I mean, if Bellinger wasn't playing, it wouldn't bother you. know, it's not going to be the end I of the day. I have a perfect example. A better example. What's a better example? When years ago, when uh, Bryce Harper was playing for the Nationals, he came to San Diego and everybody was talking about Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper. Guess what? Bryce Harper didn't play in the yeah. first two games of the series and everybody wow. was very upset because they bought tickets for it. 
Speaking of Bryce Harper, 0 for 11 to open the season until tonight. Oh. Home run, home run. He's got two. Phillies lead the Reds 2-1 to one in the fifth. Some other baseball for you. The undefeated Tigers in a rain delay at New York against the winless Mets. Uh, winless White Sox taking on the Braves tonight. Your guy, Garrett Crochet, for the White Sox, shutting down the Braves so far. No, no score. He's doing a great job. In the early going, the Marlins are trying to stay winless. <laughs> they're trying to. Yes, they're trailing the Angels 3 nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Earlier today, the Brew Crew improved to 4-0 and with a 3-2 win over the Twinkies. Why Speaking, are you calling the Twinkie? I, I know, know it's twins, but... Speaking of the twins, <laughs> the guy who used to always say that during his morning radio broadcast because he had twins. Oh, yes, Mr. And they drove uh, him yes, crazy. Yes, Mr. Leitner. Mr. Leitner had a really excellent tweet today I wanted to read to everybody in the wake of the passing of Larry Lucchino. I tried to speak as well as I could about Larry Lucchino. Um, you know, it's going to be missed around here around and, baseball. Uh, missed around baseball for sure. Here's Ted's tweet today. It said a shame that MLB never made Larry Lucchino its commissioner for his brilliance, but he was the kind of guy that told people what they needed to hear, not what they wanted to hear. People like that don't get made commissioner. That's true. It said Ted in his tweet, no Larry, no Petco park. His concept of retro parks changed MLB, and he won at every stop. I've lost a friend. Baseball lost a giant. Good tweet, Mr. Leitner. Um, the passing of Larry Lucchino died today at the age of 78. You know, I didn't know much about Mr. Lucchino, but I have learned a lot today, and it seems like he was a very important person in this town, and yeah. obviously he was a, He was a doer. He was a leader. And I, I kind of touched on it earlier. He got people to believe in stuff that they didn't think they would ever believe in. Because, I mean, I guarantee you San Diego in the late 1990s was not thinking we would have a jewel of a new ballpark right smack dab in the middle of the gas lamp district. It doesn't seem like it would. But Larry Lucchino believed it could happen, and it happened. And as I said earlier, Larry Lucchino had been president of the Chargers. I mean, that wasn't going to happen, but if somebody like him, we'd have a football team here. Larry Lucchino wouldn't have let that team get out of San Diego. I guarantee you that. I mean, I wasn't around. Guaranteed. We, we moved to, my family moved to San Diego in 1999. Okay. And so we came in right when all this was happening. And so I don't really remember the fights and all that stuff beforehand, but they it were, seemed they like were it was annoying intense. and nasty. The Petco Park thing, I mean, got put back maybe two years because of all the lawsuits that yeah, people that. in San Diego kept filing against the Padres. Or, you know, for having the audacity to ask people for some, you know, some tax money. I mean, we can't get anything done in this city. Larry Lucchino, he did get something done in this city. On the chat said it was bigger than a stadium. It brought money to gas to the gas lamp. Slightly. Slightly. I mean, it refurbished our entire area. Mm -hmm. You weren't here. Village. Again, you weren't here before 99, you said. Yep. The gas lamp was a dump. Nobody went to the gas lamp. Now it's one in of the, the hot spots. In the 80s, early 90s, no one would be caught, you know, running around down there. First of all, there wasn't anything to go to. Yeah. <laughs> so, but wasn't the, the East Village was a really rough place, too, right? Just a bit, you know, I don't want to say a bad part of town. It just wasn't somewhere you hung out. Uh, I guess the, I can say it was a bad part of town. It was a tough part of town. Larry Lucchino revitalized the whole area. Uh, Thank you, Larry. I see a name on the chat that gives me the shivs because I've talked about his name so many times. But Mike Aguirre, I guess, filed 45 lawsuits, over 45 lawsuits with uh, a guy named Bruce Henderson. Ugh. Okay. The name Bruce Henderson makes me want to. Uh, gives you the shivs. Yeah. Mike Aguirre, too. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, people like that, I mean, made it almost impossible to get anywhere. So. Still do. 
Yeah, there are still people like that <laughs> yes, out there. there are. Yes, there are. All right, we got to hear from Mike Schilt when we come back. Get you a little bit ready for tonight's ball game. Ball game. Ball game. It's poncho night. Oh, yeah. You know what else it is tonight? Oh, Ben and Woods night. Ben and Woods are throwing out the first pitch. That's right. They got to be nervous. I would be real nervous. I got nervous when yeah, I did it. You got to tell what us did the I story. Do about three years ago, four? Maybe uh, it was before COVID. I don't know why I even got to do it. I don't they know either, been, but it was must awesome. Have, they must have hit the, they were like at the end of the list of people. They're like, uh, um, uh, how about this the guy? Pages. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chris, Craig Elo? Craig Elo can do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to do it. It was fun, but even though I mean, I was a, you know, maybe the fact that I was a pitcher. Made me even a little more nervous because if I, you know, boxed Bounced it that. up, I wouldn't have a good reason. See, this is why I think. But it is a nerve wracking chore. There's I, no question. I told Ben about this when we sat next to each other on opening day or home opener day. Yeah. And I said, are the guys nervous? And they said they're really nervous. And I said, well, that's, you know, perfect for you because you don't really you're not a baseball player. They they actually play baseball like hardball leagues. And so they are throwing a baseball on a consistent basis. I don't want to see any bounces from Paul and Woods. Okay. Is, is Paul throwing one out too? Yeah, yeah. All it three of them? Yes, yes, yes. What? I asked Adam why. Are going to drag three catchers out there just for these guys? <laughs> don't they have anything better to do before the game? What do you call them, schlubs? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Camposano is going to be warming up somebody in the bullpen. What are they going to call up some guy from the AAA to no. catch Paul Reindel's first pitch? Hey, Paul's actually, I think, the best baseball player out of the three of them. I didn't say he's not. I'm just saying that you if know. the Padres are listening, I do at one point want to throw out a first pitch, and you could do it on like um, uh, Star Wars night or something. So if you're if you want if you want guaranteed entertainment value oh god bang for your buck you would hire scraby to come in and throw a first pitch you would hire me so well whatever the i case command a hundred thousand dollars per pitch put him on the list put scraby <laughs> you and you and yamamoto make about the same yes a <laughs> hundred thousand per pitch hey what are, you know what i haven't even checked on yamamoto what's he been doing i don't think he's pitched since uh what that was his debut last week he pitched the uh what no, second. that wasn't last week. That was three and a half years ago that he made that debut. Yeah, in Korea. well, he, he had the game in Korea. Then he pitched. Uh, oh, he did. Okay. And then he pitched against the Cardinals. Pitched five shutout innings. I see. I and didn't he see has this. not pitched since then. Okay. I didn't see that part about five shutouts. Didn't see the five shutouts. Five shutties. Five shutties. All right, Ben and Woods throughout the first pitch tonight. Get your poncho. I'm sure, there'll be some sort of mention and honoring of Larry Lucchino. So get get there a little early tonight. Leave a little early. Enjoy Gwen and Chris on the way and Sammy Levitt's pregame show, which follows us, which follows traffic. From the
NBA scoreboard, Lakers 64, Toronto 58. It's at the half. LeBron James already in double figures with 12 points. I mentioned that because this guy is unbelievable. Didn't he hit nine threes the other night? I know he hit a lot. Nine for 10. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Put up a 40-point game. Okay. I mean, I know you're not impressed, but... I'm he's impressed. 38 years old. I think he's, isn't he 39? I am not. I thought he was 38. But I mean, LeBron James is hardly slowing down, he other is. than the fact that he misses a game here and there. But whenever he wants to, he can still take over. We got some news on his son, too. Bronny. What do you got on Bronny? According to a tweet that Kirk Kenny sent me. Ah, well, that's uh, certainly a very well connected. You know, I tweet. do. I do actually trust Kirk. I don't think he would send me anything that would be false information. Kirk so Kenny, I've known him. It. I've known Kirk Kenny almost longer than my parents. <laughs> that's crazy. You and, <laughs> you and Kirk were were like womb mates or something. I don't know. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, but he said that, or the tweet said that Bronny is entering the transfer portal and going to leave USC. Oh, really? Yeah, which is kind of a big deal because Interesting. his dad plays in L.A. Maybe he'll go to UCLA. I Maybe he'll go he, to Loyola Marymount. He's not going to Loyola Marymount. Well, he, you know what people are saying. What are they saying? Kentucky. But is what he good the, enough? No. <laughs> he just yelled that. Sorry. <laughs> no! no. He's he's not. You know, I mean, I don't want to say he's not good. I mean, he's he's definitely good. Division one college basketball yeah. player, but he's I don't know the fourth or fifth guy in his own team. Someone if said that. Someone said something to us on the chat weeks ago when we were talking about Bronny and said he did recover from a heart attack. Basically, or I think it was a heart attack yeah. on the floor. So no, I'm going to wait fair. and see. But he's entering the transfer portal, which is interesting. Very uh, interesting. Nit, your guy. Milk Chamberlain <laughs> and Indiana State leads Utah 61 56. We've been enjoying him in here. 11 and a half minutes to play. Yeah, we've been watching some of this game, watching uh, Larry Nerd. It's the yes. same person. So if you're wondering who all these names are, it's yeah, the same they, person. They've named him the same thing. Yeah. Um, quick note get you ready for Padre baseball tonight. Padres ERA of 6.29. Ranks 24th best in baseball. Okay, okay. Going to be up to you, Darvish, to do a little something about that this evening. Even more troubling, Scrabe. What? Padres bullpen ERA so far this year. 7.02. Not going to get the job done. If you were to ask me who is worse right now, I would have said starters. Uh, That six-run inning that Cosgrove had. Really hurt them. Yeah, yeah, early in the season, numbers get skewed. Okay. Um, on the hitting side, though, San Diego Padres, first of all, they're second in the majors in homers. That's your Padres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have 10. The only team that has more home runs? Doyers. Ugh. They got 11. They've also played more games than everyone else, too. True that. Padres True are that. sixth in OPS at 824. True that. True that. 824. The only teams ahead of the uh, Padres in batting are Braves, Arizona. And they played the Rockies. That doesn't count. Dodgers, Pirates, and Reds. You know who just got a triple against the Rockies? <laughs> uh, my Co- grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett Cooper. Is he playing for the Cubs right now? He's with the Cubs, yeah. He got brought up? Yeah, he hit one off the top of the fence and then hustled his way around that third. Boy, Garrett. It looks very cold where, where I miss Chicago. Garrett Cooper. I think that would have been a good signing. I do, too. And there's a lot of guys that would have been good signings for the, for the Friars, who I think are shorthanded a little bit. I think so. I think they're, and, you know, it's not like we lost a couple of games. We're starting to see that. I think they were shorthanded even when they were winning a couple of games. Yep. I mean, we've been talking about the short. When Manny goes to third base, yeah, your DH options are going to be Graham Pauly, Eggy Rosario, and Tyler Wade. A, I, sure, could one of them bloom into a 35 home run, 120 RBI guy? Yeah. But is it likely? Yes. Is it likely? No. No. Is it likely the jerks are in Profar hitting out of the six hole is going to be able to 
give you the kind of production you need out of a major league six hole? We talked no, about it. it's not likely. 320, and it's not likely. It's not likely. Jer- uh, Jer- you know, Jackson Merrill had the home run last night. Couldn't be happier. But your center fielder in Major League Baseball normally got to give you 20-plus home runs, 20-plus steals. I don't know. Is Jackson Merrill going to do that in his rookie season? I hope so. I kind of think he will. You think he's going I, I to? Tweet, I've been, I've been. You're on the bandwagon. I, I'm on the bandwagon. Yes, I tweeted last night. Hype is real, yeah. even though they were still down in the game and it was a solo <laughs> home run. And I realized after the fact that may have been a little bit well, of an was, overreaction. It was so good to see him hit that home run. There's no question about that. I just, I think this Padre lineup has some holes. And the fact of the matter is, is they're still number six overall in hitting at the moment, because why? They're hitting 380-something with runners in scoring position. That helps. Last night, they just didn't get anybody in scoring position. That helps a lot, actually. Yeah. But the pitching is going to ultimately have to turn around here. To that end, Mike Schilt was asked about his bullpen and how he plans to use it. Hold on. Moving forward. Okay, there it is. As mentioned, this is a bullpen that has a 7.02 ERA right now, which is not, not good. Not good at all. Given the number of innings that have been pitched so far, what is the state of the bullpen? Um, well, you know, uh, look, we've got eight guys, so that part, you know, we've been able to pass the ball around. You know, we're uh, looking to get the lead tonight to get to Suarez, get him some work. Um, I really applaud the bullpen. You know, they've been built up. Ruba's done a nice job. We're in that, you know, sweet spot of where the, you know, beginning of the season is, getting built up not pushing the starters too much and then still competing obviously and filling up the innings to get to the to the end so um bullpen's doing you know we're, they're doing yeoman's work man whoever yeoman is i'm not sure who yeoman <laughs> is but they're doing great work and they're taking the ball and we're doing the best that we can to you know protect them but um they they've worked really hard in the all season to carry the load and then just in general what is the plan to manage those arms throughout the rest of the season yeah, well, always look, you know, it's a big part of the job. I've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a combination of things. It's really about availability. Um, I'm not going to push a guy that doesn't feel comfortable, you know, and comfortable meaning like they're feeling like they're in, you know, it's some kind of risk, you know, um, relievers get it. You know, there's a shirt years ago, a guy named Randy Cho was a reliever and he used to wear a shirt said relievers are people too, you know, um, <laughs> And it's just uh, you know they're the they're the big part of the club, but they you know they they know they got to answer the bell and they got to tote the mail and you know you got these great plans and the game breaks out and you know guys pick each other up, so it's a tough unit as far as the year goes. Um, again, just communication, making sure that um, if they feel compromised, they need a day, we give them a day. You know, it comes to the risk of competition some days, but it's a long season and. At the end of the season, I want to make sure I can rest my head on the pillow and make sure I'm not jeopardizing anybody's career. That being said, there's also that dialogue like, hey, I don't feel great today, but I'm going to give you what I've got, and um, I'm available. And I've had a good history of being able to have healthy relationships with our bullpen. And, um, but the fact of the matter is, there's, you know, at home, there's definitely nine innings, and somebody's got to pitch them. He's right about that. Um, Mike Schilt, if you're paying attention, Yeoman means – very good, hard, and valuable work. Oh, wow. Okay. And it. Uh, Who is yeoman? The origin of the phrase comes from the medieval England, where a yeoman was an attendant to a nobleman. So a nobleman had yeah. a yeoman as their service person. Yeoman's work. Yeoman's work. Makes sense now. Very good, hard, and valuable work that uh, someone does, especially to support a cause or to help a team. So very, uh, there you go, Mike Schilt. You need anything, just come to us. I like how you said, I don't know who Yeoman is. <laughs> we'll take care of you, Mike. Call me, call me next time. I, how do you think throughout the season we're going to get less from Mike Schilt? Because we're getting so much yes. from Mike Schilt. No, I think we'll keep getting it. I think this is what he's about. He's, he's so prepared and so informed. I'm just not used to it. Yeah, he's going to give us a lot. Uh, before we move on and get Sammy in here for the pregame show, 
We don't have a Scraby's Chronicles tonight because of the ball game. No. How dare the Padres play during your show? It's been sad, yes. But you will have a show tomorrow night. I will. And you have uh, something you want to get into and announce here before yes. we uh, move I on. Why. I don't know why I just screamed that, but I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah! yeah! I'm very excited for what I'm going to announce tomorrow night. So uh, if you're a Scravenator, you know who you are. Make sure you're listening at six. Oh, you're going to not. And you're not going to tell us now. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, come no. on. No, no, no. I'm building Wait a this minute. Thing you up. just made me give up some of my yeah, valuable yeah. time yes. for information that you're not going to give me? Yes. You can have the information when I turn off the mics, but I would like for everybody to tune in tomorrow night at 620. If Scraby gives me the information, I immediately go to Twitter. <laughs> and text it out. Text it out. <laughs> tweet it out. But I've been working on something that's going to involve some of you listeners, and I think it's going to be very fun. So tomorrow night, six tomorrow night, we got Scraby Wednesday, Chronicles, Thursday, and possibly Friday, depending on games. You'll be on Friday. Uh, yeah, if they don't go in extra innings. And all tomorrow that stuff. you'll be on at what six o'clock, right yep, after we're done. Pretty much, yeah. So tomorrow, because it's a day game at the yard tomorrow. Yes. Tonight it's a night game. Sammy's got the pregame show next. Stick around for that. If you're on your way to the game, don't run anybody over, but hurry up. <laughs> Get there because Ben and Woods are throwing out the first pitch. You want to see that. And uh, you want to make sure you that. get your 97.3, the fan poncho as well. Yes. Which you'll be giving out tonight out at the ballpark. Gwen and Chris back tomorrow after Padre Baseball. Thanks for joining us. Have a good rest of your Tuesday. It's only Tuesday? I know. It's going slow this week. Man.